This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Trickell Professional Art Supplies. So go to uh, trickell.com and get 10% off of their brushes, panels, or floater frames if you use WTD10 at checkout. Hell yeah. What's your favorite brushes, Sergio? I personally enjoy the Spectrums, Josh. Hell yeah. Uh, Yeah, if you uh, use the code, it lets them know that you guys are listening and that you're supporting them and us by using that code. What's that code again? WTD10. Hell yeah. So use that and check out. Don't forget. Yeah. Uh, Buying brushes helps us keep this thing going, helps us do cooler things in our future. So. Mm Mm-hmm. Buy some brushes, and uh, you get a discount, and you support us, so. You obviously need new brushes anyway. Just look at them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't clean those fucking things. Mm-mm. Lazy fucks. <laughs> Lazy <bro>. fucks. <laughs> probably, probably should swear. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, like, I get, like, like emails from, like, teachers who'll be like, yo, we just did, like, a, a you know, a workshop, like, with your work and stuff. And I'm like... Don't do that shit, man. Like, you're fucking training people. Like, the competition. You know what I mean? Like, like don't fucking do that. Why are you going to do that? You know what I mean? Like, I'm still making it. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? You know? Waiting to drive. Welcome to Waiting to Dry, the Beavis and Butthead of our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm Beavis or Butthead, but call me Sergio Lopez. And I'm Josh Lawyer. And we got Jeff Martinez on the podcast today. And thank you for putting up with already our troubles that we got. Man, this is one for the ages. There Off the mic. Yeah. <laughs> this is Murphy's Law today. Yeah, yeah really. We went wrong. <laughs> yeah, knock on some wood. <laughs> yeah, I know. God, I don't think, uh, yeah. So be ready for an asteroid to hit midway mid- <laughs> yeah. through the conversation because yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cheering neighbors, uh, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. But so, you, are you are you Bay Area native? No, not at all. I'm a Mexican native, yeah. okay. Oh, born okay. in Mexico, yeah. Born in Mexico, oh, nice, that's cool. Yeah, yep. nice. I grew up in Cuernavaca and then huh. moved to Colorado, but been in the base since '97. Oh, that's cool, oh, okay. Wow. So, are you fluent? Uh huh. That's cool. I yep. didn't expect that. Yeah. That's huh. Right. That's right. I know. I was, because one of the things too is like your art, there seems to be a huge Latin influence in it. Yeah. Like this folk Latin influence. Yeah. And I was like, well, his last name is Martinez, but you don't like, you're, you have really good English. You kind of look like a gringo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to my Latin knowing <laughs> self. Right. Obviously. <laughs> uh, we probably get the opposite. I, <laughs> I get confused for being Mexican, yes. which I'm not. Yeah. Um, and you get confused probably for being a white guy. That's right. That's so, right. Go incognito. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those yeah. uh, <laughs> Freaky Friday uh, <laughs> movie scenarios. <laughs> uh, that's cool. So <laughs> when did you move up to uh, Colorado? Uh, we moved up to Colorado in 86. So 86. Mm-hmm. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No. I was born in 86. Yeah. Oh, were you? Yeah. Okay then. So we've year. been in the states just as long. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Except for your English That's is probably right. better. <laughs> uh, nice. And then, so I, uh, well, I don't know if you want to date yourself, but how old were you uh, when you moved up? I was twelve. Twelve. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Was that a big culture shock? And I mean, not entirely. I think I think the long the long term kind of thing because we would come up. My mom's from the states, so uh-huh. we would come up oh, okay. and see family for Christmas. I see. Um, then go back, but moving up permanently, that was definitely like you know, right. it was a different thing because it wasn't like Christmas all the time. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Colorado is supposed to be beautiful, right? Colorado's oh yeah, beautiful, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just moved in the middle of winter, so. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the, the way we would play in Mexico is you'd go out to the street, right? You know, and right. Couldn't really go out to the street in February. <laughs> right. Right. And plus, kids didn't really play that way. You know, there was like right. a pervert danger in those times, it seemed like, you know, oh. like, like flasher. Still is, I in think. In the neighborhood. Yeah. So, like, so a lot of kids were playing <laughs> in their backyards, you know? So we would have to, like, right. you know, kind of huh. hang out in the front. And... I always grew up, I mean, when I grew up, I, we always grew up playing out on the street. Yeah. We were, but I think I got the last little, little bit of that. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Even my kids here, I'm like always trying to like push them to 
I'm like, yeah. Can you move your mic just like yeah, three like inches? That. I can move myself. Uh, too. Or, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. I remember thinking, uh, I remember I went back to this, to like where I grew up, and there was a sheet metal fabricator company there and we used to go and play in that area and they mm -hmm. would like the workers would like show us little random things to do there and then we went back and visited and they were like one of the guys like who's this guy and the guy was like i don't know how to explain it. it's like the kids that would play in the neighborhood like he, it was like because it <laughs> yeah. doesn't exist that much no, anymore it's weird he's like i don't know how i could explain it because the guy was young too so it was like he didn't understand yeah the idea of kids coming into their work environment yeah of like sharp metals and, and like hot metals and playing around yeah I mean, we used to do that shit too i mean we used to like just prowl you know yeah. when i was a kid it was just Go walk a few miles away from you know, yeah. ride our oh, yeah. bikes and exactly. just like mm -hmm. figure some stuff I don't out. Know, get chased by the stoners. Yeah, and, you know what I mean. Like just I don't yeah. know, adventuring. You, you go something. up to like people that seem like they're doing something cool and like ask them a shitload of questions. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I try to leave my front door open so my kids will wander out, but it's just not like <laughs> mm -hmm. that. You know, you got to put like little like <laughs> treats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Gummy, gummy treats like, down yeah. in the corner. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> opposite of Hansel and Gretel. You're like trying to lure <laughs> yeah. them out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. So they're not as interested in just like roaming around like your kids are? I mean, aren't? I, I don't know. They just, it like that idea is like constantly introduced to them. You know yeah, I mean? but it's like, like too yeah, foreign of an like, idea for them. These I don't know. Days. They just have like kids have a different existence. These I days. guess they're so. Like, yeah. kind of more like yeah. structured and like, right. Like, as much as, yeah. I mean, it is Oakland, but at the same time, like it's, right. it's Oakland. You know right. like, Yeah. You know, like, yeah. It's like, do you remember walking the Oregon Trail, Sir Joe? <laughs> Things change. <laughs> On my computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, On your computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> yeah. They've got like too many like distractions. Inter like where you don't have to walk anywhere. Oh, dude. I know. Yeah, everything Something is like or regimented. Like, or it's like structure. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I don't mean to. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to give them structure, but they're just mm -hmm. like they seem to be waiting for it. You know? right. Interesting. It's really weird. Yeah. yeah, like soccer ball match at this time and uh -huh. karate right. at that time or right, something. Right, like right. And I, you know, mm -hmm. as like a non-parent, I was like, "Fuck that." Dude. Yeah, like that. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, I agree. It's kind of the, when you slip into that parent lane, mm -hmm. that's what's there. You know what I mean? It's like all the parents who are like doing it well are like, right. got little Spartan kids that do all kinds of sports and shit, you know? And you're mm -hmm. like, and are also like into going to, you know, museums and like, right. you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just trying to like let them be, you know what I mean? Right. Like you mm -hmm. have all this pressure to like kind of like huh, that's right. square them up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, because if not, you're like depriving them of. You know, the advantages they're going to need from their sucky public school education. <laughs> right, right, it's, exactly. Huh, that's weird. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. So that's, I never, a whole childhood thing I never think about because I don't have kids. Right, yeah. But that is kind of weird that it almost seems like the second they pop out, there's this weird structure of how to make them best as an adult right. mm -hmm. in a weird way. Huh. Right, right. And you kind of... And you're like, I'm supposed to do that? You you're like, like breeding them to com to compete in a weird way mm -hmm. with, the, with the surrounding babies, the surrounding <laughs> yeah, one-year-olds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's totally definitely like a fear, you know, something yeah. biting at your heels that if you don't... Yeah, it's weird. Do it, you know? People are weird in general. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, I think the own fear... If, where is my huh? the only fear <laughs> I uh, would have if I was a parent would be like, hopefully you're not homeless... <laughs> or like a like make your money like i don't know unsavory ways or something like that but like there's yeah. like a it's like other than that like you'll be fine right <laughs> exactly yeah most people there's so many dumb people in the world that are able to figure it out you know yeah like i mean it's true there's just like those characteristics you don't know what it is you know what i mean you want to have somebody who's like an interesting yeah kid, you know like a, or a person when they but are they interesting life. if you kind of square them away to be interesting do you know what i mean yeah it's like yeah. the old like want let them wander seems like a way more a way better way of kind of making them interesting people totally uh, yeah I don't know. yeah you end up projecting a lot too when you're a parent you know what i mean yeah. so it's like uh, mm. i always wish that i was like a Fancy into fencing or like <laughs> surfing or whatever. Right, know? right, exactly. So the kids are like doing fencing and surfing. 
Surf at the, the same, same time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Surf. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have taken it out on them. <laughs> <laughs> you better copyright that idea. <laughs> yes. Put a patent on that. Sure <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. X Games 2021. I would watch that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So, but you were saying earlier that um, your your kids were getting into art too, like they they're into it as well is that yeah, anything they, that you pushed on them at all or i mean we don't really push it on them you know mm -hmm. we do like i do have like aspirations that someday you know they'll help me out you know yeah I mean? yeah like it can be their summer job you know what i mean oh like, sure because we you know we spend a lot of time with each other you know what i mean so I, my goals are to like kind of have like a you know think about right. it as a family mm -hmm. business you know what i mean yeah. like painting murals and all this stuff you know and, nice mm -hmm. um, like learn they can learn how to gesso because yeah, no one you know wants I mean? to like, do that. If in the future also they had a job with me, right. you know what I mean? Like, that'd be great, right? Like, yeah. Like, nice, wholesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be like a, I don't know, wholesome way to live, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's always, the fear I always think about is uh, the, you know, like when you see people that always push against their parents so it's like if their parents are hippie then they mm -hmm. they become a lawyer if their parents a lawyer then they become a hippie yeah it's like um it's like that weird how do you mm -hmm. make them into cool people <laughs> that you think are cool people <laughs> right you see, like car shows like on netflix and stuff there's always like in these racing shows or like rebuild a car or whatever there's uh -huh. always mm -hmm. these like the girl who's like dad was like hella into cars so she's, like, right yeah whatever, exactly you know what i mean it's like that's kind of more like what I have in mind, you know? Yeah, like somebody was totally. Just around the business, you know? I like it. But yeah, sometimes it does work like, out that way. It's like generations of artists and that. Like, yeah, you know? you know, just like you had it in the environment. So it's like you kind of take it for granted, you know? It's like, yeah. Like what we were talking about, that girl. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what girl? The documentary? The girl yeah. Whose parents, oh. like, whose oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have to go there yeah. all the way, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, this is pre podcast. I was like, do we talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The um, what was the documentary again? Do you know, I don't know. Uh, MJ told me she, I didn't even watch it. She just, oh, uh, let me, the for anyone listening, yeah, yeah. there was uh, two parents who were artists who kind of mm. had a daughter and they weren't as successful as they dreamed to be as artists, but then their daughter came up and became like a super successful artist. So, good lord, when they, you talk about it, it sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, but but it seemed like they that made them super jealous of their daughter rather than being like, hell yes, go yeah. get that. They were like crabs in a bucket and being like, how dare you? And I'm always like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like introduce me to these people. Or, uh, um, yeah, but yeah, I think the documentary is ends up being super dark at the end a lot mm. of like mm. suicide stuff oh shit sad mm. stuff <laughs> yeah i mean it's all how you think about it you know murals are a little interesting and uh -huh. like like i mean there's art obviously murals are art but at the same time it's like there's a lot of times where murals are kind of like a skilled trade you know it's like right. you're like a builder or electrician you know what i mean you're right. kind of like doing a commission type of thing and it is mm -hmm. the kind of thing you can train somebody on you know right and so sometimes it you don't get all it doesn't get all hung up on this whole like being an artist this is my my art right you know i mean because like and sometimes you're make you're considering the public you know for you're sure considering the person seeing it so mm -hmm. it's like well you have to you're making things for for that public consumption so it, it becomes mm -hmm. just something more yeah shareable so yeah it's and in regards to murals when did you kind of like start to, were you i mean you do have like a fine art element to you like you do show your work in galleries but i feel like the majority of your work is probably done on on the city right on i mean in terms of numbers paintings right. you know i make more paintings you know oh just, you do yeah because you oh. know just i can sit down and mm. you know in a month and right. you know in the studio and bang out some pieces you know so i mean right. i'm always i'm always painting paintings i just see know, somebody always there I mean, for you, I'm always like you and Amanda Lynn mm. when I drive into San Francisco. Mm. It's yeah. just like, Chet, Amanda, Chet, yeah, Amanda. Right. I'm like, Thanks, how right. do you guys sleep? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Amanda, especially, she's, yeah, she's on another level with that uh, productivity. You, um, but yeah, no, no, I mean, there's only so many walls I get asked to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not really like in a position right now where I'm like, 
I want that. So, you know, make it happen. Right. You know what I mean? So I have to get invited. You know what I mean? Have like my people call your one. people. Kind of yeah, thing. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you got to let me in first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, you know, there's only so much. But, but no, I mean, when I was a kid, like the, the town I grew up in, we had mm-hmm. like a lot of Diego murals right. and stuff. Okay. Uh, Siqueiros' studio was there too. So, okay. um, you know, I always saw that big shit. And, right. And um, when I moved to the States, you know, like, I was always interested in art, so mm-hmm. um, that to me was like, that's the maximum one could be, you know what I mean? Right. I see. And the graffiti mm-hmm. and all that got introduced to me much later, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like in my late teens and early 20s. So, right. Mm. So I, I kind of came at it more from the mural side of things. Mm-hmm. And, I see. And, yeah. mm. That's cool. It's always interesting to, like, uh, I know M, my wife MJ, she's brought it up before, and I, and I, it's similar with me about how much murals can kind of inspire little kids to Mm. pursue art or like it's the one unless you're bringing your kids to gallery shows it's probably the one time where they're going to see some you know artwork and be like whoa what was that and how do i do it yeah Uh, and i've talked to i mean for this podcast we've talked to plenty of artists and a lot of times murals seems to play seem to play that sounds wrong whatever uh a huge like part of why they ended up being artists you know yeah that mm-hmm. and graffiti kind of seem to be two like big influences mm-hmm. so do you ever do you ever wonder like uh, the, who what what random artist is gonna pop up based off of a hmm. a mural that you've created or anything like that? yeah i wonder no i mean yeah, I mean, it's that permission, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like the, I think that what's attractive about it is like, you know, especially when you're like a kid, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's the same with like tagging and stuff. It's like you, you're not really a part of the community or the city that you live in until mm-hmm. you're out in it, you know what right. I mean? Like we were talking about prowling around when you're a little kid, like, mm-hmm. you know, own, starting to own your little corner. This is my ditch. Right. Whatever, you know what I mean? This yeah. Is skate or whatever, you know? Right. It's like, it's my little underbridge spot. <laughs> totally. You know, it's like, I run this. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's when you, I think that that's what, like, with murals, it's like, it's kind of like the art has, like, a, achieved a way to be a part of, the public space you right. know what i mean it's like it's become okay to be there and so that's right. like it, it's aspirational like as when you're an artist because it's like i would also like to participate in my fucking community you know right. what i mean i would also like to like you know feel like it's okay to do my thing you know what i mean yeah, like when you're not sure. like trying to cover your ass all the time like you know mm-hmm. like watching behind you to make sure nobody's going to catch you like and you can spend time doing the thing right you know that's like a really like that lets you know that your art has reached a certain level that people are okay with it you know what right. I mean? like whether or not it's like the greatest or whatever you know you yeah it lets you know you know so. yeah and if you, it's not what they like i mean they have the ability to come at come and talk to you yeah on the street which isn't fun but <laughs> no nah, man yeah but yeah. still uh yeah, that's true one that's a, that's a hard one yeah one thing that like uh me and my wife we've s- slowly starting to pursue murals Mm -hmm. and one of the things i'm realizing is the amount of like go-getterness a mural artist has to have Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. it's almost like if you think about uh fine art there are kind of like little beacons to kind of a point to like oh this gallery matches my work i can Mm -hmm. go and try to build a relationship with them and hopefully show with them or whatever well when it comes to murals it's like there's technically walls everywhere Mm -hmm. now it's your job to figure out which one of these are are going to which one of these people are willing to pay me to put art on that wall and it it's like a crapshoot kind of in a weird way it's like maybe all of them maybe none of them but yeah. i have to like put in that work to v- there's no beacon you know a lot of times yeah. there's yeah. no um i don't know way to figure out who's willing to shell out some cash i mean there totally. there are but there's a lot of different ways you can approach it you know and different ones are like can be really inspiring like mm-hmm. that whole like i'm gonna go out to the liquor store owner and be like yeah, okay yeah <laughs> you get tagged a lot and i get wall or whatever, right. You know, right, right 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 and like you know doing it like that and that that's fun you know mm-hmm. sometimes you know it's like i mean you can also get on like lists like for pools of artists for like, right. public commissioners and stuff but man sometimes that world can be like depressing you know what i mean it's yeah. just to, like kind of box you into like you're constantly talking about the local neighborhood you know what i mean they're like 
come into a neighborhood and paint about the neighborhood. All right. The people right. The neighborhood. And mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, you need that, but sometimes, you know what I mean? If sometimes it's the hardest, sure. if you just want to have like your own voice, you mm-hmm. like, constantly got to be reflecting back the, the place that it's in back to itself. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. just like, it's like, right. man, you know what I mean? Just look around at the real life while you need a mural for it. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, like left, you know, leave some space for new shit. You right. know what I mean? Right. For, like, you know, like, cause I don't know. we, we did this mural recently in our neighborhood Mm -hmm. and um the people were really happy that it was we were like we literally lived a block away from the mural but we got this weird backlash from people saying like oh like what are you doing this in our neighborhood and like this is our neighborhood (laughs) there's like this weird outrage people are like are they from the neighborhood it's who gave them this wall and you're like who cares? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like painting in the mission, man. Like it's yeah. like it's just it sometimes it's it's so difficult because like I, I think I like I kinda get like considered part of like a semi old guard of the mission now, you know what uh-huh. I mean? And mm. I'm like and I I haven't lived there, you know, for like ten years and stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, um I when I go there, I don't really recognize I don't know if I know anybody who lives there, you know what I mean? Right. It's like it's like and when I go paint there, I just feel strange. You know, I, I still feel like an outsider. It's like the first time coming there. Yeah, well, I mean? the mission is so like. It's well, polarized. And yeah. So, so now it's like, you know, there's this whole like, this is the mission art. You know right. what I mean? It's like, but it's like, you know, like what allowed for that space for it to become mission art scene was the fact that it was open to like punk rockers and right. like mm. low rider people. You know what I mean? Like that's right. because it, because it wasn't just like, you know, like, you know, it, it the, chicano scene of like murals definitely brought it up you know what i mean right. but within that there was a love of like the punk rock scene and the reggae right. scene and, you know and all this other stuff and that's yeah. why that, that Just, neighborhood was so vibrant exactly but now it's like kind of like getting locked down to a little bit to like you know mm. this is the mission right you know what I mean? it's, it's like, weird and you weren't here when so and so or whatever right. <laughs> it's like it's, it's right just, uh, it ends know, up like being it up in time almost yeah. like it it just becomes very political and mm-hmm. you're like it seems like you guys are trying to not be political in what you're thinking yeah. but by doing so you're making it super totally. political <laughs> totally. it's like it's like don't you know that dog only barks at you if you're scared of it right. so, <laughs> mm. so don't be scared <laughs> uh but yeah i mean it's weird it is weird because because the, the even like the mission is so well known for just being so dense with murals mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. people did that like that didn't just pop up overnight that's yeah. a culture that's been around and that culture has been a ton of different group of people you know from mm-hmm. like the like random graffiti artist to like that one where the lady's just giving birth of a baby you ever seen that one yeah totally, <laughs> it's totally. Like, no i love that one the mosaic one, right? yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah. It's like all these like different voices that make it unique, but it's weird. It's weird when something has to, I mean, I think the environment of, of the world right now adds to that with everything just having to be attached to politics, but it's, yeah. it's I don't know. I think what kind of makes it difficult sometimes is like, it feels like you're trying to put a parenthesis around like mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. lock it down and be like, you know, yeah, this is mission school. Right. This is, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. And it's like, in when, when things are in a flow, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like you're just putting like a name to it for non-players, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But right. Like, mm-hmm. But within the art thing, it's like, you know, why why this and this is the beginning and the end of that, you know? Right. What I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, yeah, I think that when people, the more you can like compartmentalize something like that, it's easier to just throw away or like set aside. So mm-hmm. why are people, uh, people should be less interested in doing that because it yeah. helps things grow if you can't define it so easily right yeah yeah, yeah. Like it's that, also not like interesting the concept of street right. art you know what i mean like when i started hearing that that word you know what mm-hmm. I mean? like street art it was like i kind of like i was like fuck that shit you know like, <laughs> right what the hell you know it's like it's art you know right. what i mean like mm-hmm. why you know like street just seemed like a kind of way for like gallery people to be like Right. cheaper yeah reproducible it, it also like, seemed you know, like it was mm-hmm. able to, yeah, for know, people like, to define art that's done illegally on the street from graffiti it was like this weird yeah. like mm-hmm. this is acceptable mm-hmm. yeah. illegal work right, this is right. unacceptable yeah and we just fix that by yeah. make it calling it this you know <laughs> all right yeah. whatever and then it ends up kind of doing this weird thing within those two groups of making them against each other yeah. you know mm-hmm. foes totally. because, oh because <laughs> it's like yeah. uh 
It's a weird language can do weird things sometimes. Mm-hmm. They're defining Holy. things. So they no, put art like, in the name, so like it's got to be more of, legit now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. There was like a lot of love before, like between like you know. I mean, I think there is again now, you know, but between like the mural and graph world, it just mm-hmm. wasn't really like a lot of crossover. And even right. though it used to be like, you know, can can I have your liquor store? You know, right. you get right. tagged a lot, you know, but you could tell, you know what I mean? You could tell when it was just like somebody like messing around, you know. Right. But the moment like cities started like working with that idea, or artists started working with cities to like mm-hmm. be like, yo, we could do like graffiti abatement program and like make right. a big one. Like mm. and they started like putting like one artist on a wall where like, you know, fifty dudes are like tagging and communicating right. back and forth and mm. stuff, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like one person comes in who's like, My first mural, you right. know what I mean? Like <laughs> sponsored through the city and stuff. It right. suddenly oh, became sure. this whole thing and like mm. a lot yeah. of murals started getting tagged and it was just like it felt like no love, you know. Yeah back and forth you know feels like it's getting a little better but you know i don't know somebody else defined that you know yeah. that, that's what was annoying it's like what you're right. saying it's like you know this stuff is okay this stuff is illegal right. you know what i mean in fact this stuff is more than 400 dollars worth of damage is a felony right illegal, you know what i mean like that's jacked up you know yeah. it's like if you know, you on the got... other hand we have this like total rookie right and we're gonna give you five thousand bucks to like paint your first mural on the street on top of like 50 tags we've been doing it for you know a decade or right you know mm. so because we find this beautiful and that ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I mean, good. This is bad. You know, it's like it's a yeah. It's a weird that whole culture of art on buildings is mm-hmm. so complicated of an issue. I mean, I, I I've done uh, my share of illegal stuff on walls, uh, but I always get in weird conversations with buddies that still do it, and they're like, they're like, yeah, fuck this mural, and I'm like. I mean, like, I got, why are you mad at the mural for? And they're like, because corporations are yeah. like, but at the end of the day, there's an artist behind that who's making money doing something that they love to do. Yeah. You know, that they're trying to add something that they think is beautiful to their city. Yeah. Or a yeah. city, maybe not always theirs, but, yeah. but they're not, there's no negative intention. There's no like, there's not bucket loads of money they're making. Yeah. You know, they're not yeah. balling out of control. They're just kind of surviving, doing something, doing their trade. And yeah. you're you're mad because there's a lack of walls. I'm always like, that's my issue always with yeah, like that's that. Not, yeah, me it's too. Like, that's why I'm like, like man. Look, there's know, another wall yeah. somewhere else. You don't have to go. Some, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to say a lot of, you know, not a lot, but some murals, you know, it's, you know. <laughs> They're not meant to be in the public space. You know what I mean? They're too, mm. too personal or too precious or somebody's mm. ego trip. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like it's me, you know, and it's like, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, like. I thought you, I thought you were going the other way. The, like like well, that mural's bad, but I mean, I get what you're you saying. Know, yeah. Like, I mean, you can tell the intentionality behind art and, you know, right. people who are spending time on the streets, like judging that shit, you know, right. they can mm. tell too, you know, and it's like, you know. A lot of times when you see something get like really like burnt, mm-hmm. it's either because it's a total hater who burnt it right. or because maybe, you know, it's a little bit of an ego project. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, mm-hmm. If you do like a big ass black wall, like black, flat black, with tons of open space, you're inviting silver tags. You know what I mean? It's like you have <laughs> yeah. to consider that shit when you're painting in the public. You're inviting everything. Yeah, you're inviting tag. everything. You, know, you have to like consider flat black is a beautiful in public space. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know? like... <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I totally agree with that. The it's a weird it's a weird realm to to like maneuver in. Yeah. So Definitely. I mean, Definitely. I, yeah. You, you've got to definitely have some tough skin. You've got to definitely feel like what you're saying, not so precious about your work. Mm-hmm. You just kind of are doing it and then going on to the next thing, which. Or the opposite. I mean, the opposite could be true, too. You know, you got to be like super, like every time you get tagged, you run out there and you fix it. Right. You know what I mean? Like you actually mm-hmm. like take care of your stuff. You know right. What I mean? So that's it kind of the opposite you know yeah just letting it be you know i kind of fall more into that you know yeah i could respect that too and that's if you know anything about graffiti you get buffed immediately a couple times you're like mm-hmm. i had to give up yeah there's another wall that i can hit yeah i i because i've i've i remember murals being a target what when i was doing stuff uh and the reason it was a target was because 
you couldn't just paint over it some flat color. Right, right. right. So it was like, oh, it's going to run longer. You know, yeah. catching tags on murals going to run. Long. I yeah. didn't agree. I didn't like subscribe to this belief, but I, you know, I had buddies that would, and you, and we would have our little conversations even then. And be like, I don't agree with that. Like, yeah, huh. yeah unless you've got like some, I because there are moments where people have they dislike a specific. You know, like, I mean. For instance, there's people that don't like Shepherd Fairy, let's say, right? Yeah. And he's a huge name. Mm -hmm. And because he's a huge name, you're going to have haters. Mm -hmm. I know for sure there's graffiti artists that hate him. I don't know why. I don't know this. They're back. Maybe they have history or something. I have no clue. But yeah, you have something pop up that Shepherd Fairy, you're going to have some people go over it and be excited to do so. But that's more beef related than than the it's going to run longer related kind yeah. of thing. Mm. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what's justified and what's not. You got to kind of figure it out yourself. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't either, you know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm too old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Honestly, like, I just, like, I see I see it keep playing out. And it's, it's just funny, man. It's like, it, it all kind of, like, seems to have crossed over, like, from the realm of, like, it's just weird, man. It's just fucking weird. It's weird for me, like, to go paint some stuff. Like, uh, if I when I would paint like florals on the street, it was mm -hmm. more like a fucking revolutionary act. You know what I mean? Right. It's like this ugly mm. ass world, and here we go, like, from, you know, like right. some like street flowers, whatever. You know what I mean? Right. And then that's like just like now like a selfie wall for somebody. You know what I mean? And right. like, yeah, like kind of like. Shout out Sansa. Like, Man, I need to do that for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's exactly. like, what was it like? Nah, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. It's like art is like entertainment. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh, yeah. like you know, the public space too. And it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, I want to say like, you know, don't be entertained by it, but it's like, right. that's not all it is. You know right. I mean? right. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. I could totally see that. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's complicated. Yeah. A little, yeah. Super complicated. little situation there. But I mean, that happens everywhere. Like, like mir uh, museums, like people just go there and take selfies in front of a Rembrandt or something. <laughs> don't even look at the painting. <laughs> Shout out. It's like, now it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That is weird. It, there is that like weird thing where people, they almost are like, oh, we want, oh, we want a wall. What we want are like angel wings, so people can stand in front of them oh and take pictures. And you're oh, like, right, right. <laughs> and you're like, uh, well, then go hire someone that can just copy that other person that's doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like you only want it there for people to take pictures in front of it. I know. I know. It's like, what about having good work there? <laughs> Does that not cross your mind? Uh, I guess I don't even understand the impulse because I've never like really been like, look at this great photo of me. What? You know what I mean? Like I've never been like Mr. Photogenic. In I don't know. Like, I've never been like so proud of the photo. Of Come me. on, so, like, man. I don't understand <laughs> the impulse to have your fucking picture taken all the time. Well, here's you know the I mean? here's a question then. Why do you have so many pictures of you with angel wings? <laughs> <laughs> because I put angel wings journals all over my house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. I so I just, I, yeah, I don't know. And, and even, you know, it's like we were like, earlier talking about like painting out in the street you know? mm -hmm. it's like we touched on it but like that just like people walking up and taking pictures of me when i'm working i don't know uh, why it's like right. it makes me crazy i hate it yeah and i logically <laughs> crack know showing. where what time we are living in and all this stuff i logically know all this shit mm -hmm. but when i hear like a shutter like going off behind me it's just like i just like i'm like do I go to your fucking work and just start taking pictures of you with your work? And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, talk to me. Like, what the hell? You know? Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. 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 There's those weird, I mean, there's the weird part of muraling that you're kind of free from if you create in your studio. Mm -hmm. uh, the beauty of public art is it's in the public and people get to enjoy it especially people that don't probably ingest art, yeah, you know, otherwise. And then, but the opposite is also true of like, you get people who have no knowledge of art mm -hmm. and they will come at you in weird ways that you can't predict, you know, totally. you're, like, you're like, all right, well. I mean, we're kind of blessed. Like, like, you know, we're, we are really blessed. Like the Bay area is like pretty incredible. Like mm -hmm. on Hashtag. the general, the knowledge about, 
art and street art and murals and all that stuff in the public right. is pretty high compared to anywhere in the world. You For know sure. what I mean? It's like people have a pretty broad understanding of yeah. a lot of different things, you know? And like when buildings get built, people are like, where are we going to put the murals? You know what I mean? It's like, right. it's a step up, you know? But along with that is like people have a real comfort with, you know, like, you know, there's muralists. Like, come on, kids, let's all go stand next to him and take pictures <laughs> and shit. It's like, you do this with construction workers, you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. like, you know, it's like, so there's a kind of familiarity that kind of comes in and it's like, you know, yeah. there's people just forget. Like, I mean, even though it's art, it's, it's not necessarily entertainment, you know what right. I mean? It doesn't make you, just because you're out in the public doesn't necessarily make you but I, accessible. You know maybe what, I mean? what like, it is, is, is you know, like, maybe it's because us as artists, we are most of the time, like, in our little nooks creating. Right. So, right. The right. magic of creating art, which people don't understand, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden is right in front of them, and yeah. they're like, "That's that thing. That's that thing." I don't know. I never get to watch. Mm, I yeah. guess it would be right. probably that's the equivalent fair. to I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, no, I know that. I logically know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It just sucks sometimes. It's just like sometimes you just like kind of in your space, you know, and yeah. like all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you think you're like I don't know. I don't know, in my head, like, I might as well be in my studio, you know what I mean? I'm right. sitting in the corners doing my thing. But next thing you know, mm -hmm. you're like a monkey in a zoo, you know what I mean? Like, people right. are like, hey, 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 you know? Like, yeah. Right, yeah. It's like, yeah. And you're, work, you're <laughs> also your doing... Laugh at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? It's also you have to do... You're doing a job. So it's like, right. it's like I can't stop and talk to you every second because totally. this yeah. is costing me money. Well, that's my mentality, you know what I mean? Like, like for me, it's like what has helped me with my work you know mm -hmm. what I mean? with my career is taking it like that you know what i mean right. like, this is my job you know i go right. i go to a thing you know when i talk to people about doing a mural it's not like i'm like well let's see what happens you know what I mean? right. a lot, it's my job you know what i mean it's like we prepare a proposal we do like the whole thing and so right. i show up at six in the morning or seven in the morning and i work till you know six at night you know it's like it's right it's my job you know and so right. I, I treat it that way so when right when all of a sudden somebody comes at me and is like Oh, you're the wacky artist. Oh, look, you just <laughs> yeah. dreamed this up. It's like, <laughs> fuck you, bro. I'm up to like yeah. five in the morning. You know, yeah. what I mean? right. Like, I'm preparing yeah. this stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, so, for sure. So you don't like to be condescended at work. You know, I don't go to your job and be like, oh, did you like file all those papers on myself? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, did, did you do that? Yeah. I, don't, yeah. like, you know, I don't go to your work and slap the spatula on <laughs> your hand. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, did you put all those lights up there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How long have you been putting lights up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're like, I got to get to work. This is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't mean to sound salty, but it's just sometimes. It's uh, like, sometimes you need like the salt that, to season things up. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, so did you go to school for all this? I mean, I went to school for painting. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, okay. I went to the Art Institute in San Francisco. Uh -huh. oh, Institute, right, nice. Painting mm. and printmaking. Nice. Cool. That was cool. How was that? It was cool, man. It was a really good time. I, yeah. had, I had a really good class, you know? Yeah. You um, must have been in a good time in the Art Institute. My freshman year was like, I mean, Kahinde Wiley was like in our class. Mm. You know? Oh, really? Like, wow. yeah, he's a big time dude now. Mm -hmm. you know? It's like, um, no, we had like some pretty great people there then. And I thought the teachers were really cool too, you know? Um, mm hmm. We didn't really learn any like technique or anything like that. You know? but, <laughs> who needs but it? But I did have really great teachers that were kind of dysfunctional people who nice. knew how to run a studio. You know what I mean? Like, right. so you would learn that. You know, you'd learn right. that people would like have like a work ethic, even though the rest of their life is like falling mm. apart. Right. You know what it's I mean? Like, but, like, they were that, like the kids like, that would explore rather than the kids that had structure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At that yeah. time, they weren't really like taking so many like freshmen. You know, there weren't that many kids out of high school. I was 24 when I went mm. there, you know, and I was mm -hmm. a little bit on the younger end on, on, in my class, you know. Hmm. Hmm. But by the end of my time there, there was a lot more like freshmen. And, I mean, I think it made a difference. You know, they were, they needed to make money. So they changed their whole thing up but um, mm. but it was, it was yeah it was good school man that's cool yeah i studied under rigo there and so he was like one, do you guys know rigo um i don't know think so i he think somebody like the one tree like the, the sign the oh, sign uh -huh. work and stuff you know like inner city home yeah, um, rather than the one way sign it has like yeah. a one tree and points to the tree yeah exactly yeah um, and he was like doing a lot of work back then and he was like he and like barry and like all those people were working mm -hmm. in clarion alley and stuff so he hmm. He was my teacher then. I kind of 
try to like I glommed on, you know, to try to like work with him and Clarion on right. and do more murals and stuff. For sure. So, so it was yeah, they were doing big things. Was key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, do, does he still do stuff like that? I, mean, I haven't really. Yeah, he's he's been doing really really interesting projects, but he's like kind of I think on another level. I think, right. You know, yeah. Some of like, that blue chip stuff. Some of that museum parallel dimension. I, yeah, <laughs> I have yeah, yeah. no idea what's right. going on there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. They. I mean, having someone like a peer like that probably is super helpful. Yeah. You can see, like. I mean, not, I mean, I'm, we're not that much in touch anymore, you know, but, but having known someone, you know, right. I mean, who's, who's working that way, right. you know, lets you know that it's a doable thing, you know. For sure. So, yeah. And being able to see someone maneuver and stuff like that, even mm-hmm. if they're not like directly explaining things. I feel like if you're not a very observant artist, you're probably not going to be a successful artist. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And <clears throat> so whenever you, and I, I feel like if you're around someone who's doing something that you want to learn from, they don't necessarily need to explain it. You can just kind of pick up on things that you're like, okay, I see. Yeah. I see these things. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then so right outside of school, you were hitting murals? Is that, was that your pursuit? Yeah, no, I think that's right. I mean, I started doing some in school. Um, you know, one kind of led to the next and mm-hmm. stuff, you know, got a job and, you know. Right. A little jobby here, jobby there. You right. Know? And, you know, eventually. Yeah, no, I was starting like kind of encroach on my grocery store jobs and stuff, you know. And <laughs> but eventually, I worked for I I got a job at a mural company in San Francisco. Oh, I did okay. stuff for um, like casinos. And mm. That kind of thing. You just and, did something in Vegas that was fucking awesome. Uh, uh, concrete. Yeah, that piece? concrete yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually in Oakland, but oh, we yeah, yeah. Oh. it was fabricated in Vegas. Oh, oh is that right. how it yeah. worked? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was awesome. Good. How does yeah. that work? Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you didn't do the concrete part. No, and honestly, the whole concept wasn't mine either. You know? Oh, really? Like, uh, yeah, no, I was working with Sorel, uh, Sorel Sway. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been doing um, he's been doing a lot of work with, like, uh, different buildings that pop up in Oakland, you know, trying to do our consultancy. Uh-huh. And, yeah, they had a proper budget for this thing. And I it just I wouldn't like have it. thought about it, yeah. of it, you know, but now having seen it, I'm like, oh, wow, like sculptural. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. another thing. But it, honestly, like, it's just, it weirds me out a little bit because I'm, I'm like really a kind of a nut about having my hands and everything that has my name on it. Right. Know? Sure. And so this was like strictly design and that mm-hmm. part was kind of a little difficult for me to kind of right. swallow. But, mm. Would you? But it's so something I wouldn't be able to do that I'm kind of right. like, that's fucking dope. You know? mm-hmm. like, Would you be willing to try to learn sculpture or anything like that? Would, would that be something you would want to pursue at all? Totally, totally. There's just so many hours in the day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, kid schedule is complicated, right. and, you mm-hmm. know, and I run a pretty, like, steady, like, I'm, I'm pretty booked out with murals and stuff, you know? Right. So it's, it's kind of hard for me right now to, like, fit in like skill learning and stuff right, you know what right. i mean like yeah. like I'm, I'm i'm thinking like i'm a couple of years out from like my kids being more like coming home and going to school on their own and right having more time to do residency kind of type of yeah. oh, okay. type of things where i can learn new shit so mm-hmm. right now it's just like when they're business, like, leave you know? me alone like, dad that kind of thing like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah is That's that cool. the way you would want to pursue it like through a residency like that um, not necessarily, but I'm just thinking, you know, like a way to like kind of carve out a chunk of time. Cause, gotcha. Because yeah. I'm not really like a two hours here, two hours there kind of person. I kind of really need to mm. like get in it, you know? Sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was cool seeing that though. It was cool seeing like your work kind of adapted into this three-dimensional thing because it lended itself so well to it. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, And there um, were all kinds yeah. of things that weren't like what i expected just because mm-hmm. the way that 2 2d translates to 3d like mm-hmm. it just certain things didn't they made sense in the 2d but like in the th- yeah it was just it was really weird like yeah. it was relief like certain things that i would have expected to go in came out you know? mm-hmm. oh, okay so, yeah so it was yeah it was, it was cool it, it's always one of those weird things where i wish my skill set was would allow me to do things yeah. that i that my brain would want me to do totally. you know totally. Yeah, but you, it's not the matrix. So I don't get to just plug in and learn. No. Yeah. And when you really like think, when you really like start to like back up from the art world and uh-huh. see, see the people who really do have all those skill sets, they really don't, you know, right. like they really have like, 
putting a studio together skill set. Right. You know what I mean? Like contract, like help, you know. Exactly. Hey, I fabricate this for me, you know, right. like do that for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Great, you know, grow this moss for me for like two years so I can put it on a... <laughs> exactly. You know, right, like, right. Like kind of yeah, they're a warehouse. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. With a name on it, with totally. their name on it. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. How, how do you feel about that? I'm always like, I'm, I'm more like you. Like, I want my hand. Mm -hmm. I want control over the thing that I'm calling my art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, letting someone kind of take a big part of that creative aspect seems like it would hurt my brain a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whenever I see artists that are have that warehouse model, I'm always, I'm always kind of like. I don't know. It's not like I'm against it or for it. It's always just like I I can't understand it in a weird way. I can't yeah. see yeah. how someone could do that. Yeah, I'm I'm totally with you. I I, I can see how people do it. It right. makes a lot of sense, you know, it gives it gives you the freedom to be thinking about right things, ideas and all that. I mm -hmm. get it. I I do, you know, and right. You know, in in terms of they're an architect. You know, you do reach a certain point, like even when you're playing, like, you know, I think we're like kind of all at the same kind of level, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you, you take on what you, what's brought to you, right? right. And like, mm -hmm. but you can say yes to too many things and stress yourself out. For and, sure. And then it reflects in the work and all this right. stuff. And, and so you're burdened by how much time you have to actually do things. So right. like, it would make sense if you could find somebody who was like a really good assistant who like was to your vision. It would be a great thing to do. Right. Totally mm -hmm. not there. I have trust issues. I could never mm -hmm. like bring somebody in to sit in my studio. You know what I mean? Right. Like, mm -hmm. It's just I don't know. It's just like it's my space and stuff. You know? Yeah. So, right. Plus, I just hate people watching me paint. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, go, go do totally, something. Totally. <laughs> but when it comes like I, I just person like I don't really buy that much art. You know. Um, <clears throat> but I wouldn't necessarily like want to buy something that I knew the artist didn't necessarily touch. You know. Right. It just had their name on it. I just, I just personally wouldn't. So. I reverse, you know, so I don't necessarily want to put something out that I didn't do. You know? Yeah. Unless it's something like that, you know, where it's just clearly out of my scope. You know? Right. And like, I know. Um, the, but a painting, I would never, I don't think I'd ever put out a painting that like I had an assistant, you know, touch more than necessarily like stretch the fucking canvas. Or something, right. Just you know? so. Yeah. But Some I don't stuff. Think, yeah. I don't think I would put something out there like that. The, the, um, the times where I get convinced that that's such a good thing is like when you see that like i'm not the biggest fan but banksy when he did that disneyland thing mm -hmm. i was like holy fuck like that's mm -hmm. such yeah. a big idea totally and to execute that correctly you can't just it's it's impossible to just do as one person yeah uh, in general like n even if it was some even if like even if disneyland decided to do disneyland like that you know yeah would, it would be a <laughs> yeah. team of people yeah right. so it's like yeah. it's it's that weird thing where you're like wow you've that looks great like that whole teamwork thing is mind-blowing but yeah but then I don't know. Some artists like create like this aesthetic that like I think that when they do have that shop kind of, mm -hmm. they actually end up making all this like visual content that it actually does like kind of create. I'm not saying like these are like my, you know, I'm not saying like putting these people up on pedestals, but they like that guy Okuda, right? Like Okuda art, like the Spanish dude with all the triangles and everything colorful. I'd probably, have to see it. I'd have to definitely see probably it, yeah. seen his work. <laughs> I'm but, horrible um, at names. But there's just such a mass of Oops. that kind that of aesthetic, you, you, know that. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that it, it is interesting. I don't think one person could get all that out there. You know what I mean? Or like, right. like I was saying, Kahinde too, you know, there's a certain richness that now has kind of permeated the culture. Mm -hmm. That's really cool that I don't know if he would have had that much time necessarily to do all of that right. on his own. You know what I mean? Mm. But now there's like sense. a it's it's an allowable thing to have these like very masculine floral like mm -hmm. you know rich kind of things and mm -hmm. you know and maybe it wouldn't have permeated if he was just locked away by himself making it you know right that's an interesting it. point yeah mm -hmm. um, the yeah. the only issue i one of the one of the bigger issues i think i find with it is it seems like to go that route is because you're in the pursuit of like greatness, mm. which is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think 
that intent doesn't necessarily mean that someone who's pursuing something that's not right that. more private kind of yeah. yeah yeah just having a whole is, life kind of thing yeah. yeah or just creating good work from their hands based off of something that they want to say you know like these things that like they don't necessarily need a team for it, yeah it, it doesn't it shouldn't devalue that pursuit but it, uh, i think a lot of times it ends up those people end up being the headlines to any art story you know mm -hmm. the they they are the which i it kind of makes sense because they are pursuing greatness so yeah they probably have teams that also are focusing on getting their name in the press totally. and shenanigans that totally. will make them well known things like that that i to probably the artist the the like artists in general that's not going to be so much of what they're going to respect but the, the, you know the majority of human beings are going to have their name in their ear so they're going to bring totally. them up yeah yeah no uh, like most people would say you know banksy or whatever right like, oh, oh you yeah. do art yeah, well, like, you know banksy, you like banksy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, enough people know about that <laughs> yeah. you know and that's There's when you really like a gray area between like artists who are like um you know, good enough, but, mm -hmm. but don't, you know, don't really want to put themselves out there. Right. And those who are like not good enough, but are really into it. There's like a kind of like space where there's right. a cross over there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. and it's like, and you do, you have to either, you have to choose, you know, yeah. you go one way or you go the other way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, if you're not that good at art, you better be a super social person mm -hmm. all right that's yeah that's and, exactly yeah right. compensate and can, somewhere yeah. yeah and then get you into doors that's that highly overlooked but yeah. Yeah, yeah being a social person is a big aspect of being successful for sure know, in the art world and and yeah. that's you know that's a yeah. and you if, can take it however you want to take that but yeah. Yeah. and if you don't want to be a social person mm -hmm. and you want to be a brooding artist in your studio you, you better, better be, be the best working, right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you better yeah. be dope as fuck because yeah. People will forget it if yeah. the work is dope. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's uh, and then there's all those in betweeners, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. That that uh. I feel like we just slightly talk shit without talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does. You can't talk about art without talking shit because you do have to like, you have to contextualize. Yeah. And, and these days there's so much of it, you know, there's yeah. so many people doing it right for whatever they're doing. You right. know what I mean? Like there are people working that red painting, the Red Bull refrigerator circuit right now who are killing it. Right. Mm. You know right. what I mean? Like doing like, you know, all that kind of sponsorship that are killing right. it, you know, mm -hmm. like, millions of followers and right. all this stuff and it's like oh well, yeah i guess go ahead and get it you know what yeah, I mean? and it's, it's great nice, that red know? bull also <laughs> shells out budgets for them to do that sure. And sure yeah it's good like i don't i'm not gonna hate on that it's just uh, my issue is always when it's like this weird like it's back to what i was saying where like it seems like one seems like sometimes i'll hear people talk about Binksky and him being a genius and i'm like uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he's doing anything that's like mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. But except for the Disneyland thing was crazy. Yeah. But, but the, I don't know. I I would have to like research on how much of that is actually his hand. Like how much of the idea is even right. You know. Like yeah. like for instance, when I before the iPhone came out, I remember saying they should make an iPod have a phone on it. Yeah. That doesn't mean I created the iPhone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, mm. it's how much of my thumb goes into something. Uh, I mean. Like that piece, uh, Saving the Banksy movie. You see that one? Uh, Saving like, the Banksy Saving movie? Saving the Banksy. It was like about a piece that was up on. He came through San Francisco and he painted something on a rooftop. In, on oh, Hay, on Hay I did watch that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it's about him cutting it out of the wall. Uh -huh. Oh, right. And when he cut it out of the wall, he completely took the, the contextual joke out of it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a literal joke about like this is where i draw the line right he cut that out and it was just the rat you know and so mm. the rat was like being exhibited and shown around like in different places but it would be like put behind like velvet ropes and stuff you know <laughs> right. what i mean and it was like he was getting like offers for like millions or whatever for this right. piece and it's like dude it isn't even that good of a stencil you know what i mean <laughs> it's like you, you know you can't fool the players you know right. what i mean it's like it's mm. like 
it's like cool as Banksy, but like yeah, there's just limits to this shit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like she was like ten dollars worth of materials. You know what I mean? And you're gonna like you know right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah I've, I've always also had this like. Like, for instance, there's always, like, the rapper's rapper, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, like that, like, the comedian's comic. It's, like, this weird thing where, like, yeah. when the the people you think are great are pointing to someone and going, like, mm -hmm. yeah. that's the real motherfucker right there. Your yeah. favorite artist, favorite artist. Yeah. 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 It's always, like, if you get the respect of your peers, yeah. that, to me, always seemed much more important. Hmm. than like the like pretty much anyone really it signals like, longevity you know yeah. I mean, you're gonna be around right. because you're gonna be supported by the actual community and right. not the fickle market you know exactly I mean? like, you know? exactly yeah. yeah and uh yeah i mean i don't know we're, i feel like we're still talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i said it's hard to avoid yeah it's like uh but um so your wife's an artist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a dope artist. Mm -hmm. She's super awesome. Yeah. I'm like a big fan of her work. I yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like for like the last couple of times I've seen you, I've always been like, your work's dope, but your wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get that a lot. It happens. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing. Uh, so, it just yeah. touches, it just like is like, I, I just get, geek out on it is my issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, both you guys have very uh, like, uh, like, the cleanness of lines seem like very important elements mm -hmm. to both of your work. Yeah. Um, and like, you, you know, like your work almost kind of has parts of it seem very like a uh, old school, like pin line, mm. like, uh, like that in intertwined in what you do. Yeah. Um, well, we kind of went on a segment. I, I just want, what I wanted to ask was, uh, how did you and your wife meet? Were you guys, mm. Oh man, we've known each other for a long time. That's that's like probably why it works pretty well with us. You know, mm -hmm. we met in. Let me see, man. You were probably like two years old. <laughs> 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 but, but we met Killing in it, like '95 or something um, in Colorado. Um, right. Really? Yeah, wow. we were in school together. And we had mutual friends. Oh, um, I got gotcha. you. We met at a Thanksgiving Day mushroom party. Kind nice. Of thing. <laughs> nice. And, uh, Yep. Uh, I don't remember. She seems to remember that day. But <laughs> I remember talking with the dog. Right? Nice. Well, that day. But, uh, but then we were roommates and, you know, like had like mutual friends. I, I moved out to San Francisco and she, she was from the Bay Area. So mm -hmm. um, we re-met again in, in San Francisco and then we were like roommates and friends for a long time. And, uh -huh, you know, and eventually, you know, yeah. Just, yeah. Friends became more yeah, which is you know you have enough like wait this sounds like a romantic comedy it was a, it was a romantic comedy did yeah. you did you chase her in an airport <laughs> no uh, I like that, that. Uh, well not no nothing like that no. that's cool though it's like yeah, the, it was cool so it was just kind of like a natural flow and you know I always respected her as an artist so mm -hmm. um, that helped a lot you know and, yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people say that it's, like, not a good idea for artists to be together. But for us, you know, it really worked out because yeah. no one else understands the, the schedule and, you know, you know. Don't project your 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 yeah. life on other people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, like, you shouldn't about that. And, you know, <laughs> all right. What happened? Just because something happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. I, know. I, was, I always tell, like... Uh, or I don't always, but I've talked to my wife about this idea where people like they, they, they talk about how things aren't going to work out or, you know, like, Oh, uh, it's like, yeah, because first of all, it's like, if you're married, you have a 50 for 50% 50 chance. Mm -hmm. So like everyone before that probably had like a 10%, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like to yeah. even get to that point of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> you had to dodge like 90% of failures <laughs> out there. Right. So it's yeah. like, you guys don't people that are sour. They're just, you know just kind of it helps man like just at least like checking off that love box mm -hmm. and stuff you know what i mean it helps you like kind of get past it and just right. like, paint shit that isn't like you know i don't know for you but like when i was like younger sometimes i would paint shit like unintentionally but like down there was like i'm gonna impress some chicks you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like I'm gonna i never thought about that balls, <laughs> like, looking, you know like <laughs> you know so there's ulterior motives of like being a cool person you know, right you know, <laughs> stuff or or maybe not making myself as vulnerable because like i'm protecting right you know? yeah, without yeah. meaning to do that you know what mm. i mean like but it 
it comes out, you know, and like when when you're like kind of like in a solid relationship, whether you know, married or not or whatever, mm-hmm. you, you kind of not thinking about that. Right. You're kind of yeah. like more like you can kind of just do the work without like, you know, that, right. that other thing. Yeah, for sure. That makes a ton of sense now that Everybody you say it out loud. Stupid, stupid shit when you're trying to get love, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I could just focus on my shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah uh, did you guys influence a lot in, in each other a lot? And I, I probably influenced her a lot more than she. Did. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure there's a lot of crossover for sure. You know, but I it feel, is. It's I a feel really the same good way. Thing we don't have really like similar styles. You know, there's definitely things that are crossover, but it, you know. I just, I can't help competing, you know what I mean? And even... Me too. We have, like, a competition whether or not it's there. I don't know if she knows we're competing, but I don't know, <laughs> you know? And so, like, it's it's in-home competition, you know? She gets yeah. the show, and I'm like, damn, I want the show. You're right. right. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. And, like, I really start turning it on, you know what I mean? Right. But, but we're starting to get to the maturity level, and now we're like, you know, like, all right, you got X show coming up in this month, so that I know I'm going to be doing, like, more kid good things right mm. so, so we're starting to kind of like so you're like kids let me show you how to adjust like, some uh, of my boards <laughs> yeah no nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean more like you know pickups and stuff like that from school right. and all that crap, so yeah i mean the competitiveness i'd never find to be a negative unless mm. they like you allowed it to like make you angry mm. or like like i don't know it's i don't even feel jealous like if i see someone doing some cool shit mm-hmm. i'm always like fire under my belly but i'm also like super stoked about yeah. whatever you do i'm always yeah. like that's mm-hmm. like i always think whenever i see someone do something amazing mm-hmm. art wise i'm always like fuck that's awesome mm-hmm. like that is mm-hmm. so cool that you just did that mm-hmm. like and it makes me want to do something big right it's yes. like and i'm the exact same way yeah yeah but it, it's not necessarily a negative towards you it's just mm-hmm. like it like almost like focuses me. It mm-hmm. just like brings me back to like if I'm like off wasting time. It's like get back to it. Like remember, yeah, exactly. You know, keep that fire under your belly because uh, you only get better by fucking putting in that work. And you know, yeah, I'm all that with like just a little more on the petty side. Because you know? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely like I'm like judgy. You know what I mean? And then I'm like. Fuck, man, you know, but it's like, <laughs> but it definitely like, you know, no, I mean, I can't even help it. It's just, it's just a natural thing. It just kind of boils up and I'm like, damn, you know, and, but, but my wife leans towards yeah. that a little bit more too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was, yeah. I'm always like, you sound like a hater. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was like, I'm not a hater. Like, All right, whatever. <laughs> I, know, I, was like, I mean, I don't like, I don't really like get off. Like it doesn't do anything for me to like, right. be a hater on somebody, but it definitely like, to kind of internalize that makes me work hard and like then i feel better when i i'm happy with where i am because of that right. you know, negative impetus but when i'm comfortable and i think i'm the shit i, I get comfortable you mm-hmm. know what i mean and like and i start repeating myself and then i'm like that kind of self-doubt the one where i'm like dude i only do this one thing or i've mm-hmm. shit, I've only been doing this thing for like a year you know what i mean right. it's like i you know it it is I need a, something to push me, you know what I mean? Right. Mm. Yeah. So for your style, there's so much of like, I don't know, like it's hard to explain mm. how you, because to me, it's almost seems like it would be like this weird meditative like process mm. because it's so like, it seems like so like uh, structured in how you like attack things mm. to the point where like th- the pre planning takes away or i don't know how to explain it no i understand what you're saying uh yeah. is that how is that how that's how i feel when i see your work yeah like uh, thinking about the artist that created it more than you know what i mean like um like if i if like it, i just have the habit of kind of trying to perceive the artist intent like hmm. what their mindset is going into it why they do what they do mm-hmm. um and I'm and f- for your work, I'm always trying to. F- I, I mean, when I look at it, I I always think like I wonder how much. I mean, murals and God, I'm like on a fucking full on ramble. <laughs> but yeah, I think I asked like thirty eight <laughs> questions there, or <laughs> no, or yeah, zero. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, like, I mean, the little bit of muraling I've 
done, it seems like most of it's created pre wall. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of go and you tackle that hurdle. At least that's what it seems like to me. Like, yeah, I have the idea, I have the plan. Yeah. yeah. Now let's go make sure we just nail it and yeah. hopefully better than the idea. Uh, and then call it a day. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if that's how you tap. I, I mean, yeah, uh, I, I definitely like. Yeah, printmaking is definitely a big part of my background, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't, you don't just, I mean, there's some printmaking that you just go and abstract it. Yeah, you know, right. some litho and stuff like that. But like, I did a lot of etching and it's just planning, you know what I mean? It's right. like, and I work well that way, you know, and it's like, at the end of the day, I do like, I do like to think about something in my mind and even I feel the most accomplished when it looks close to what I was thinking about, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I don't know. I'm not an, ex, I'm not an abstractist. So like, I just, <laughs> I, I like to be able to tell when i'm done right. you know what i mean <laughs> and so it's you know i just that's my comfort zone and i know i should push that but but w i don't know within my work there are a few different styles i'm i'm doing you know and, right. and the kind of more blended brushstroke stuff that i'm doing i it is planned to a certain degree but i mm. do step up to a panel or a wall and just start drawing circles mm. and lines and all this stuff so i i, I there is a I don't know, improvisational right. part of it. And then and then I fill it in and you know, mm -hmm. do all that stuff. But the beginning part is, you know, right. inventing and stuff. It's similar to oh, that. Cool. I've seen your videos where you do like the, on like a tablet or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just start off with like circles and you kind exactly. of yeah. lines and you just yeah. go from there. And that was specifically because I was feeling like really like everything I do is like, uh, you know, pre-planned yeah here's this gradient flower thing you know and, right. and what colors do you have in the surrounding area we can mm -hmm. match it you know what i mean it's like and i don't know it's i've always like i have a fear of pigeonholing myself you mm -hmm. know what i mean and so it's like i'm constantly trying to do other things that you know, at least broaden the palette you know and so you know that's why i started doing like a lot of the folk art stuff you know because it's like a more there's a big fountain of information to work from you know right what I mean? and that's like i don't know it's it's weird you know it's, i i originally started doing like stuff about mexican folk arts in particular mm -hmm. and especially about oaxaca because that's like where my father's family's from and, okay you know, uh -huh. it was like a real like connection to i wanted to do stuff about mexican culture that wasn't like all like Cesar Chavez and immigration right. and drug wars and immigration and right. like constant resistance and constant struggle and strife. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I just wanted to do like stuff that felt like the bright, vivid Mexican culture. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I started doing some of these things and then it kind of became like a thing of like, that's like, that was my thing. You know, mm -hmm. people started hitting me up for this like kind of barred flower type of thing. And I'm like, right. I don't really like do it for you to like be able to like nitpick it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, hmm. I didn't really like, I don't, I don't really want it to be so on demand. And on top of it, I'm also like super aware that like the women who like do the original things, there's a uh -huh. lot of like concern about like um, appropriation, you know, cultural right. appropriation. It's like, you know, so I'm doing it to like celebrate my father originally, but now it's right. becoming this thing. It's like, Oh, I, you do this thing. And it's like, I, I mean, I, I do, but it's like, I'm not trying to be like, this is my thing. You know huh. what I mean, I invented this thing. It's like, I was trying to like, give some praise to the people who do do it, you know, right. because like, mm. I got really interested in the idea of like, you know, like in a lot of towns in Mexico, for example, they, there's like one town, they'll make like these painted ashtrays. You know? Right. The other town will do like these plates, you know, right. it's like, but it becomes like the culture and it becomes the economic generator of that town and that's fucking dope you right. know what i mean it's like to have art be like a central thing in an economy i think is like really inspirational and that's kind of what i was more after you know mm -hmm. is that idea of like folk art and because i mean even within a folk art there's a lot of cultural exchange you know that happens so mm -hmm. um so i just thought that was really interesting fertile ground but when when i keep kind of being boxed in and be like oh right. he does this and he does this other thing it's like right. I'm trying to like open myself up actually, you know, it's like, so when I've taken some of these folk arty things to different places, you know, different countries, like mm -hmm. people will see their culture in it. You know what I mean? I'm doing this Mexican shit and in Japan, they're like, Oh, some Japanese shit, you know? And I'm like, right. Oh no, it's Mexican, you know? Hmm. Um, and I find that really interesting, you know, and it's taken some traveling around and it's like, there is some crossover in a mm -hmm. lot of folk arts from around the world. And, For and sure. I'm, 
and it's kind of like I'm like kind of interested right now in like how it'd be dope to develop a style that felt like everybody's style, mm-hmm. not necessarily my style, yeah, but a style that a lot of people would be like, oh yeah, that's familiar. That's my right. that's my Norwegian whatever, you know, <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. It was like, and if you made something that made a lot of people like kind of find themselves in it, like that's like a that's right. like a sweet place to be, right? You know, so. That's a cool idea. I like yeah. that. Me it's too. almost like the pursuit of like a universal folk art style yeah. kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's, it, it, you know, it's like people, like when I do it and I and I feel good about it, people also react well to mm-hmm. it. And so it's like kind of like this feeding loop, but, you know. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because I don't really have a grasp on it. You know, I don't really know what the limits are of like, you know, I'm not necessarily just trying to go and like be like, oh, let me look at some Norwegian, you know, let me look at some Norwegian stuff and copy that. You know what right. I mean? It's like I kind of want to come to it naturally you know right. so like now drawing circles and you know being i don't know like inventing like in that way and having it finished a certain way feels like i'm just kind of tapping into the way the human body moves you know right. what i mean and like um you it's know, more it's interesting a feel rather than a literal tackling of a universal yeah it's not like you're trying to integrate every single style into one style but more yeah. kind of yeah i I think that's an interesting pursuit because we talk about it a ton about like cave drawings and stuff mm-hmm. like that and how there's something primal about it. And, and, uh, usually we're talking about the, um, urge for art, for human beings to create artwork. Mm-hmm. That's where that kind of comes in. But folk art kind of almost has this similar, a uh, background where it seems like everyone seems to have this version of folk art and it's it's kind of a weird thing in that it's not necessarily done by artists a lot of times a lot of times yeah, it's yeah, kind right. of done by like the elderly women or yeah. something like that like, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's but it's like just this like thing that like just gets done by culture like by different and it's cultures weird how they'll be like they'll all do it and it kind of looks the same right you know and it's like is that because you all have the same trees around you or <laughs> you know what i mean right. you all yeah. see the same thing you know so, yeah. yeah they all got some weird vibe going on over there that we that just is in the water <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know it's interesting like how do all these like i mean i mean obviously i don't know in the southwest right like like new mexico man what is up with everybody painting the same and stuff? Right. i mean they don't obviously but there is like a right. there's something vibe. that ties yeah. everything it's together right in the yeah. dirt yeah. or the like, whatever it is yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's interesting it's the turquoise I never thought all about it is. That. yeah cool... but, i mean i don't know on the other hand like it's like i was actually like trying to like i've been trying to like think about that also in like the terms of like like street art and muralism you know it's like like there's a parallel there too you know what i mean it's like a shit ton of taggers like right. work in pretty much the same way as right. little folk artists you know folk artists and kind yeah. of, you know it's like like no one's gonna see this right. you know what i mean like yeah. san francisco's got their bus flow everyone seems to write similar in certain yeah. regions yeah mm. that's yeah that's exactly right yeah so, hmm. you know and on top of it just that kind of a non- higher level art world you know it's like right. you're going to be denominated like the kind of the people's like you know right like there's art, a weird reason you know why I mean? you're doing yeah. it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh not for fame or fortune it's just this weird urge to do it yeah 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 that's interesting or because you and your homies all do it but you didn't really realize that there's like a commercial world of it out there right you know? mm. like, yeah. yeah one of the interesting things too with graffiti talking about like universal is because the internet you start seeing styles kind of melting together Mm -hmm. and becoming you know something different yeah the european style mixes with this style mixes Mm -hmm. with that style and you get Mm -hmm. like these new like things that are kind of no one style but like you know everyone's in a weird way like yeah mm -hmm. Like yeah. everyone, you know, there was a little bit where like there was like a lot of like that kind of like twist and Ojemios mm-hmm. kind of like cross. There were a lot of characters in right. that kind of thing popping mm-hmm. up. Characters and sausage over the world, you know, like, right? Uh, yeah, spittily lines and stuff. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, um, 
th- uh, sorry. <laughs> did, so you and your wife are both artists. Mm-hmm. Did, you having this kind of like pursuit for the concept, and I'm assuming she has her own kind of mm-hmm. philosophies of what she's trying to attack in her work. Yeah. Do you guys are you guys able to like bounce a lot of these ideas and kind of test them on each other? Yeah, yeah. No, we definitely are. Um, yes and no. You know what I mean? It's like anything that you present to your partner that you see every day isn't like right. a new concept. So it's not like, you know, blow your mind. You know what I mean? Right. Like a new thought. It's like usually like. That's not how you start you've been your hearing sentence. all the gurgling, you know, the whole time, you know, and it's like, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'm like ever wowing her with my new, you know, my new Me concept neither. or anything like that. <laughs> and, uh, no, and Kelly also has like a different. She, I don't think that she. I think she has more like visual concepts that she can speak for herself. But they seem right. to be more like interpretations of dreams or thoughts and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, are never really gonna be like you know like this is my new body of work and this is what's right. behind it and what do you think about it? Because it's kind of more like she's gonna do it anyway. You know what I mean? She's gonna right. her her. Yeah, the way that she works is just different. It's more, you know, it is planned and structured and all that stuff, but it it seems to come from a different place. And I feel right. like I'm, I I I feel like I always have like a narrative component to my work. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I enjoy putting content in the work that people aren't necessarily ever going to know unless they ask me about it. You know what I mean? Right. Like mm-hmm. What what that meant and stuff. You know. Um. So we just have a yeah slightly different way of looking at things. Yeah, yeah I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Is there a reason why you put animals in your work? Like, is, is, I know yeah. you have like yeah. uh, birds and even like unicorns sometimes. Unicorns, yeah, some mm-hmm. deer. I used to do a lot more animals. I mean, just nature in general, you know. Mm-hmm. But definitely, certain animals mean certain things. Right. Um, mm. The birds and deer stuff that I've been doing recently is is not necessarily because of the animals themselves, but it's more because of this um, form of folk art from Central Mexico on. Uh, bark paper called amate, amate mm-hmm. bark paper. Um, hmm. You've probably seen them in a lot of hippie houses. It's like kind of bark paper with like either an Aztec calendar. Or they're usually like neon colors and stuff, you know? <laughs> oh, really? And it'll be like usually it's like birds and branches and a deer, right? That right. Kind of but it turns out there's that kind of thing in almost every culture in the world, you know? There's like this right. kind of thing of like birds and branches and some animal below, like either a lion trying to climb up a tree or right. something, you know what I mean? It's, and I, I think that's really interesting. So those particular ones are like more about that. Um, but that deer is like always is like chaos, you know? So like with the birds, I always, there's always like a, they're either paired mm-hmm. or they're two and one, like two males, one female kind of, or two female, one male kind of. Okay. Just the tension and then the deer is like chaos you know the deer is like hmm. the deer breaks up the symmetry and right in some kind of way it's usually like on top of a pattern sometimes right like it's kind of like magic eyed almost in a weird way yeah no i did one recently with a silhouetted kind of mm-hmm. kind of one but i haven't done that before you know but i wanted mm. yeah i wanted that one to be you know kind of that was kind of like the weird piece of that show actually, just google them <laughs> yeah uh, uh, exactly uh, uh-huh. yeah those are cool yeah my mm-hmm. thing, so you know I don't know. It's that that's from my part of Mexico, like from central mm-hmm. Mexico. So like when I was a kid, like I we used to have those painted in our house, you know, and it's like right. it was exciting to kind of do something like that, you know. Do you get the cultural appropriation a bit? Like do people actually try to call you out on that? No, I don't really get that. Um I usually try to get ahead of that and give credit to where I'm getting my my inspirations from, you know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. And like and I really like try to talk about, you know, because I don't know. I'm trying to share that shit. Right. You know what I mean, I'm not trying to be like, yo, this is my, mm-hmm. I invented yeah. this. You know what I mean? Just, like, I yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, it I'm would weird. seem like a weird thing to get mad at yeah, just because mm-hmm. it's your culture. Right. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's the, it's the money part of things. You know what I mean? That's what makes it hard. And it's like, it's hard for people who are like making, who are getting paid, who are having to sit, you know, and sell their shit on the street when they put right. like, you know, dozens of hours into embroidering something, you know, Right. And then to have somebody who's just like in an art market in the United States, like, you know, using their work, you know, either in the art market or a lot of times more in fashion and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, you know, mm. go copy a, des- a Mexican design, have it right. made in China and like sell it, you know, like for thousands of dollars, you know, right. that, that upsets people, you know? And so, yeah, mm-hmm. people, yeah. because you're not really giving credit, you know? Right. So I, um, I don't know. I try to get ahead of it, but I do, I, you know, 
I'm driven by guilt too, you know? So I really mm. like, you know, it's a fine line between celebrating something and like appropriate, you know? Um, but and, it, uh, the only thing I would find weird about that is just because you're a part of that culture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's not necessarily you. I mean, I am, but I'm not, right? I mean, you I'm know? the same. I'm half white, half Tongan. I always feel yeah. that way. Like, uh, I'm Tongan, but I'm not. It's a yeah. weird thing, but but I am. But even if I, I was like I like a hundred percent like indigenous Mexican, and I was from the north of Mexico, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily be entitled to say like the Oaxacan stuff is my culture too. You know what I mean? Right. It's like it's That's like a good point. you're outside yeah. of it. You know what I mean? But I'm using it more as a touch point of like celebrating my own family right. and also celebrating an overall. Right. beautiful aspect about mexican culture you know what i mean right. so i'm kind of trying to like not necessarily mm. own it that way and that's why like when people were like starting to box me into like yo you do this one barred flower kind of thing it was right. like i you know pangs of guilt because i'm like you know, i'm not trying to say i'm the one who invented it you know what right. i mean mm -hmm. but then at the same time i kind of feel a little bit jealous when i see other people start to do it you know what i mean mm. like not jealous mm. but you know i just kind of like mm. you know like right like you got the wrong intention, you know. Right. Like, but then, who am I to judge? Right? I think that's where it I think intent plays a big role, though. Oh yeah, hey, it's like uh, I've done little things in my work that were inspired by me growing up in the Tongan culture. Mm -hmm. But I would never. That's just because I grew up in it. Like it, right. I use it as like a thing almost for myself. Mm -hmm. Less yeah. less about like who's viewing it, more about like this is supposed to i'm using as a narrative tool kind of like how you're saying like it's only for me unless you ask about it but yeah it's it's just so i can kind of accomplish this kind of idea using these images based off of my upbringing yeah um i mean dude, like in like even like you know we're next door to mexico right and like one of the things that tripped me out the most when i moved here was like the focus in mexican culture mm. on race you know in chicanos especially right. race it was like mm. brown power that right. side, you know like right all these concepts you know like even like the concept of like everybody's a descendant of aztecs i'm like dude mm. like there's so many fucking tribes in mexico right. like not oh, everybody yeah. is an aztec you know? mm -hmm. and, and aztecs like, use like not even most slaughter you know? some like, of those yeah you know it's oh like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it does, but it's, it's just these like kind of weird things and and it's you know it took me a while to understand that you know it's because in the states you have to define yourself you have to mm -hmm. identify yourself from the from the soup you know right and you have to be like no we're mexicans and we're this you know but right. mm. but i always had a hard time with that because like for me being mexican is a nationality you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. mexico is also a mixing bowl you know like mm -hmm. just all the americas are you know it's like it's all mixed up so it's like i always have a hard time being like you know yeah you know it's like my culture is mexican but like right. it isn't the same one that you're seeing on the murals in the mission you know what i mean right. it's right. like the modern like kids are into youtube and right. like, <laughs> the same you know it's the modern mexico you know what I mean? yeah. right yeah. like the neo the new food you know the new music the new right. art the new you know it's like that's that's the one i'm talking about you know right. I mean, not the one that's like locked up into like full resistance you know we're, we're still in the 60s you know, right i see thing, yeah you know? yeah. Like, yeah 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 i don't know right. how i got off track of that <laughs> no i mean thing, but you know it's, no it's super yeah. interesting too because i'm mexican and i don't necessarily um like that's not really the culture i came from either mm -hmm. like my parents are immigrants they came here in like 75 or so yeah so. okay and they're from like jalisco and michoacan so yeah. that's its own little part of mexico yeah. it isn't like necessarily like la barrio like kind of thing either yeah so, totally. yeah. <laughs> yeah right yeah it's like we're no, it's just, yeah. <laughs> i know i, I never said essay in, in, in my yeah. like, what is an essay it's it's a weird thing habit humans have of trying to like define a thing mm -hmm. you know it's like uh I, even one of the things that i i don't know how you know i feel like it's becoming less and less but i think one of the great things about like america as like a country it's like i i don't think most people would define themselves as an american you know what i mean mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. yeah. you wouldn't be like oh i'm an american 
but it, I mean, it's changed. It seems like it's changing. It's almost like you, like this weird, like I'm an American. This is what that means. Mm. You know, like, mm. which to me is always like a weird thing. It's like, why? Like, uh, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday about flags of like, I would never fly a flag because I would never <laughs> want something to represent who I am yeah. based off of like, I don't know, a, a piece of cloth. Right. You know, like, and it is such a narrow definition. Too. Yeah. yeah. And it's so yeah. like loaded and mm-hmm. how you define. I'm like, I don't know. Like none of these things seem like something important. And mm-hmm. for me, it's like mm-hmm. you can do what people can do whatever they want, but like, this weird defining of who a human is based off of the location they grew up in. Mm. I know, I understand environment does have a part to play of who you are as a human being and culture does too. But you know, you, there's always going to be the nerdy kid in the hood. You know what yeah. I mean? Just cause you came from that hood yeah. doesn't mean you're hard. Yeah. It doesn't mean whatever. It's <laughs> going to be here tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Well, you said anytime, right? <laughs> yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> I like this part. <laughs> Bye. 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 What were we saying? Um, we were super deep talking about <laughs> cultural oh, just defining yourself. Things, yeah. You know that whole idea. Yeah. Oh, it always seems weird to me. It always seems weird that like your surroundings somehow explains who you are as a human being i mean we're guilty i I mean i'm guilty of it too if i think of like people in the south i'll add a twang to my voice you know (laughs) and assume what they believe but yeah i'm wrong for a (laughs) majority uh, probably a large majority of the people that live in those areas Mm. yeah but it just is what it is i mean Uh, even like man i'd like i'll be like man immigrants you know have these immigrant stories you know it's like oh when you talk about immigrants, even it's just like this, like uh, instantly, like I'm an immigrant. You know right. what I mean? I don't have that story. You know what I mean? And I'm not right. saying that like people don't, but I'm just saying it's like there's a categorization of like, right? Like suffering is going to be tied in with being an immigrant to this country. You know, mm. and like, and it's because that's true. So that's true right. a lot of the times. But it's right. like, but it's now like a kind of an assumed thing. You right. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's those weird titles that. You f- people fall under mm-hmm. and i don't know it's th- 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 i mean that's the i i always think the best way to convincing people of how to treat people is like i grew up very religious mm. right and with that came this weird these weird feelings towards people who who were attracted to the same sex mm. Mm. and the moment i was around a bunch of people like that my opinions changed on them and i was like oh yeah. you guys are just normal ass people <laughs> doing whatever some of you guys are shitty people some of you guys are good people right just because you're you know uh, a gay man doesn't mean all of a sudden you're a saint doesn't mean you're fucking also a demon it's yeah, like you're yeah, a human that's being right. that's right that's a part of your life and same just Let's because who you're a you christian are. doesn't necessarily mean you espouse those views either you know? right it's like, exactly it's like i think like like even in the christian world like they they're thinking a lot more about service right in general you know what i mean they're thinking right. more about like mm. whether you know the immigrants and what's happening to them right. and whether they choose to look the other way they're thinking about that right shit, you know what i mean and it's like and it's i don't know i'm definitely i i'm a reformed catholic you know mm-hmm. I mean? like it's taken a long time to get that out of my head but mm-hmm. but i do respect that kind right. of like for people who you know my mom you know she was a volunteer most of her life you know and right. like, and i really respect that you know that's for like sure. living living those those goals and you know there's mm-hmm. a lot you can pull out of that you know yeah so, yeah my mom's but, still super religious and mm-hmm. and she you know i love my mom she's like my favorite person in the world yeah and uh i would never hate her based off of her beliefs totally. we disagree on some things but in fact, it's kind of nice to have like someone who's like a North Star, you know, you right. know, she's not gonna, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, right? Yeah. Map out and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. I'm sorry, like, never say never. Has that experience, but like, you know, like, <laughs> but never it's true. You don't have to like think about, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's nice to know that. Yeah, that was dad's job. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, the, um, yeah, I don't know. that whole defining thing. I, I mean, we started this based around the idea of like culture appropriation, but yeah, I don't know the 
the appreciation of cultures, I never find to be negative. I know, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, how like Mm -hmm. money is, seems to be the very big determining factor of whether or not it's appreciate it's okay or not mm. you know mm. and even then i'm still like i don't know it's tough uh to even i don't i don't want to think that way in a in a way you know i don't want to like because it's it's just a waste of my time at the end of the day to be super angry at some like at nike trying to appropriate some shit you know it's like yeah i, I get it like it's lame i'm not gonna buy it yeah but i'm i i can't I can't put my energy into that shit because yeah. I think that just puts you in a weird, like, you know, that whole, like trying to spot, um, the color green or whatever. You mm-hmm. ever heard that? Like, yeah. if you tell someone whatever, and then like, don't look for the color green or look for the color green. Then all of a sudden you see green everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like that whole, like, I don't want to get in the habit of trying to point out the negative in humans. Yeah. Cause then you end up kind mm-hmm. of, thinking everything is green or seeing green everywhere. And right. Totally, like, totally. When you start looking at like cultural appropriation, yeah. you see it everywhere. You know, you see like, oh my God, somebody fucking using that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. You know, like, and, you know. But it's like, uh, for instance, like uh, Pacific Islanders, mm-hmm. who, who, like a long, long time ago, before the Vikings landed on America, Pacific Islanders landed on America mm-hmm. and they would trade with the natives here. Mm-hmm. And, what ended up happening from that trade was that we got sweet potatoes mm. and they got in and, and native Americans got chicken. Mm. That was the trade off. Hmm. And, um, if you think about that, that means my culture's food is heavily influenced by sweet potatoes, by y- yuca, you know, you mm-hmm, yuca. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have, we call it minyoke, but, uh, we, we a shitload of that. We mm. shitload of sweet potatoes. We shitload of um, taro, mm-hmm. oh. and uh, we got that from natives. And then if you think about Latin culture or native culture and chickens, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a big part of their food. You know, it's like yeah. now that's not culture appropriation. That's just creating of culture. That's totally. adding to culture. Yeah, like the tomato, right? Yeah, the tomato, tomato exactly. Like an American plant and that, you yeah. know, like there's nothing that says Italian more, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not Italian. Yeah. 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 Italian. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's like, you know, it's, that's why like when I'm talking about like trying to like open myself up, like to like be all cultural, but non-cultural at the same right. time, it's like kind of, it's not necessarily like a practice. It's more of like a trying to have a mentality. Right. So it's like, I'm have something in mind. Like one thing that I use a lot is Michoacan. Like in Michoacan, they do these lacquered plates, you know? So oh, like sure. I think yeah. about <laughs> these lacquered plates a lot, but mm-hmm. I don't look at them. Mm-hmm. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. When I'm doing stuff, but I'm thinking about how that process of two colors on a brush and outlining in gold mm-hmm. and doing that um, and translating that to walls. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to like not look at the thing so that it actually comes out of me the way that I would draw right, a flower right, you know, yeah, yeah. from mm-hmm. the practice that I've had mm-hmm. from looking at those things right. you know, in the past. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like kind of. Um, you know, I'm just trying to be able to be more transmissible and have things come through me than necessarily be mm-hmm. like, you know, this is all me 100%. <laughs> right. You know? right. Because, I don't know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's that too. The whole like, uh, you know, we said earlier, how like I don't want to not have a hand in my work. Mm-hmm. But then you also have to understand that like the things you looked up to and grew up around are going to influence your work. You know, like your yeah. love for these certain art forms yeah. are going to like, they influence you. You can't not have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you just have to, I, it's the idea that art builds on art. Yeah. You know, so you can't, you can't just pretend you're original and you can't, you also have to allow people to build on top of the art that was built before. Yeah. Um, yeah. And without having the, the, trying to spot green all the time you know you kind of have to like let it be and assume in art i think that their intentions are pure it's so rare that like an idea is like the first time it's been that idea you know what i mean it's so freaking i was thinking about this yesterday we went to like a festival here in oakland the life is living festival Mm -hmm. and a section of it there were some guys that were making a like a animation of it was like kind of like all black version of Star Wars, kind of, or mostly black version of Star Wars. And hmm. it was like, 
De- like Dark Star. Like the Wiz kind of? Dark Star Galaxy or something like that. I think it's going to be coming out in the next couple of years to keep an eye on. But they've been totally doing it. That old, you know, taking cereal boxes and making all their models. Like the old school That's way crazy. of oh, really? George <laughs> Lucas. Awesome. And they had these whole sets and it was really dope and everything. Uh-huh. But that you know, kind of like later on, I was kind of like the hater came out and I was like, it's just Star Wars. Right. Right. Still in Star Wars. You know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're painting the Millennium Falcon like a different color, but it's Star Wars. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they really were doing their own thing. You know right. what I mean? And it's like, and that happens, you know, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's really rare that a whole new genre right. comes into life, you know, but it's like, you can't really like hate on the people mm-hmm. who build off of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's Star like, Wars heavily yeah. borrowed from a bunch of other stuff too. It's yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I want to see it. <laughs> the Wiz it was of stars, really yeah. cool, but then later on, I was like, <laughs> I guess it was all right. You know, that makes it kind of uh, hokey, you know. Like, <laughs> There's that movie by Michelle Gondry. It's like, Be Kind, Rewind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Where yeah. they just remake every movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or you ever um, saw like the Indian thriller or Indian Star Wars? Indian Star Wars uh, was fresh. No, I didn't you see, see it. Indian Star Wars. It was, like like Indian, like Indian from Indian. thriller. But yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, I don't want to say it's Bollywood because I don't think it had a lot of like mm. songs or routines and stuff. But it was uh, like, yeah. hilarious. It's hilarious. They'll just like pirate out like the <laughs> Death Star exploding and then go back to like their janky ass Wookiees. <laughs> <and, laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's like that's hilarious pretty special I gotta yeah. find that uh, Indian Star Wars yeah. I gotta watch that I couldn't get the licensing to show in the theater so we'll make our own you know uh, <laughs> plus they got like a billion people there so the market is huge yeah yeah uh, it's weird that whole like uh, the amount um, I was talking to MJ a little bit about or was it you Sergio yeah on the right here mm-hmm. about how like you when you show your work in galleries right there's mm-hmm. this weird thing where like when the show comes down it's like almost like the work that didn't sell almost feels less <laughs> valuable or something oh, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Mm-hmm. You price it too high and uh, it yeah, yeah but it's like if that painting sold somehow it retained its value but that doesn't mean that that painting's any better than the painting next to it yeah Mm -hmm. and so we were talking about how like oh you know you should be able to like put that in another gallery because Mm -hmm. those are new eyeballs seeing those things to them you know like there's no devaluing in it because they're seeing that piece for the first time they get to enjoy it for the first time and and I don't understand the value I mean, thing, yeah. thing either because sometimes it's like it is like it's make believe. You have some old thing that right. was that is like eight or nine years old, right? But it's the same size as the new things you're selling for five thousand or whatever. Right. And it's like mm-hmm. know, everybody's like, oh, it's by size or whatever. Right. I'm like, man, that shit wasn't, wasn't <laughs> that good. You know what I mean? Right. Like, to me, it wasn't that good. But right. maybe somebody else is like, wow, that's one of his early pieces or whatever. Right. You know? mm-hmm. And there's some value there. But I'm like, I can take this. Thing, that's you know? a good way like, to phrase it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? His this is his earlier works. They're like, oh. Early. <laughs> that's why it sucks wow <laughs> right <laughs> just rebrand it that goes yeah. back to like the using yeah. of words <laughs> so, yeah. like, that shit didn't sell for that yeah. show so it's not worth anything or like that was it could be like a day old you know <laughs> after the show and yeah. just start branding like oh that's his earlier works when he was <laughs> yeah. finally coming up with breakthroughs and like oh wow oh his early works those aren't available that often There's now not that many of those left <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, yeah exactly <laughs> way before he started doing the new stuff that no one likes <laughs> oh yeah uh Nah, man, I know that. That's that whole ah, man. That whole show experience in general is like. Here we go down the fucking talk of shit. But <laughs> so like, it is, man. It's like even like when the show comes down, it's like you do, man. You judge yourself when it goes up. You judge right. yourself too. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. You know, ugh. Just full up, you know, like, yeah. We just love to hang on to that teenage angst, you know what I mean? Totally. We just signed up for a life's worth, like <laughs> lifelong experience of teenage angst when like is it yeah. good enough i know i mean like kelly are like you know i just finished my show and honestly i finished a little bit ahead of time mm-hmm. and the way our deal was like when i finished then we tag out and she gets in the studio more i see and i'm just like for the first time ever i like was done like a week early nice. before the week before hanging and i'm like 
just trying to milk that time. I'm like, man, I'm not done being like the the show's <laughs> done, but I'm not done enjoying like these long days in the studio. Right. And, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like listening to podcasts and painting. I'm not yeah. like that, you know? And I don't know. I'm just like um, milking that time because I know then it's like, Yo, yeah, you worked on the shit for a year, and here you go, three weeks. And what didn't sell, like, you know, yeah, it was like, it's like, right. yeah. valuable. It's like, what is that? Yeah, what is that process, man? It's like, I don't, I don't, I'm just not convinced the studio model is the one anymore. It's yeah, like, it doesn't. I mean, not, I mean, the gallery model is the one. You know? Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. You end up, you end up bringing all your own people to most of the shows you have anyway. Honestly, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, it's a know. weird transition but i mean instagram and social media seem to have a big reasoning for that and mm. hey, you know artists can do that marketing themselves so it changes yeah. the dilemma or the the relationship yeah between the artist and gallery which is a conversation that seems to have not happened yet between the artist and gallery but the change is already exist or is already there you know it's yeah like, it's so, like galleries like seeking out artists who have like large followings right. you know, and then expecting that following to sell the work itself right. and like not mm-hmm. really, like, and then, doing what a gallery is supposed to do to right. you know right treat it treat everybody like an up and comer right you know what i mean like invite the shit out of everybody to come right. to the show it's or like, if you rely on that artist to do that then there has to be a conversation of reevaluating the importance of each each other's relationship Mm -hmm. and figuring out you know if you rely on me to be the the salesperson and the creator Mm -hmm. that this relationship has changed from what it used to be so that's the weird Mm -hmm. world that exists today but then you go well then why would they take a risk on you know someone that doesn't have a small following but has fucking phenomenal work and you go like well wh- how does that translate yeah mm-hmm. and it's, it's a, a weird point. it's definitely better now i think you know like what the the art world and galleries i think so for the artists is definitely oh, for better. artists for sure yeah <laughs> yeah you know? so I, I don't mean i like complain but it is it's it's strange you know it's a different you know it feels like you kind of more you like doing gallery stuff to stay relevant in the mm. gallery thing because otherwise you could just run a proper shop off your instagram page you know what right. i mean like really if you if you're the kind of person that loves shipping out prints and do all that you know you could make a living doing that you know mm-hmm. you get enough of a following mm-hmm. or just hi- be able to hire someone or yeah mm-hmm. or figure out some intern pro- program mm-hmm. that you can just get mm-hmm. a f- yeah free i do t-shirts hey i'm student. releasing a <laughs> yeah, yeah. or whatever if you want to be like etsy yourself out you can totally do that you yeah know? Mm-hmm. and probably be fine you know? yeah with a little bit of a following but it's just great to have the option i think you know yeah oh, the yeah. ability to have control of your own destiny at least a bit more than before you know it's like yeah that's nice you know to yeah. not have to rely on some movers and shakers to to uh, make you who you're some totally. art person but i don't know if this happens with you guys but it's it's hard for me to then dial it back when I start talking with a gallery or something like that, I'm like, it's really hard. You know, now I'm like, I want you to work for that 50%. I like want to see you working. You right. Know what I mean, like, mm-hmm. and it's sometimes hard for, when I get a contract or something like that to dial back the, you know, looking out for number one kind of mentality, you know, right. mm. to play along and just sign mm-hmm. that artist right. agreement, you know what I mean, kind of thing. And it's like, I, I I find that really difficult. I think so. I think it's becoming it. It's hard when you see the check at the end. I think that's mm-hmm. the hardest part because you yeah. know the work that goes into it, yeah. and then the relying on you to kind of bring potential buyers. Yeah, and they're all and do your the marketing. Buyers. Yeah, and then you go like you see that check come in, and it's half the size of what's sold, and that becomes a you know it becomes a touchy subject mm-hmm. and. That's where that conversation between artists and gallery seems to be lacking because I think artists feel a certain way. I think galleries kind of feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. And and then there's the, you know, the real, sh- there's there's a quality of gallery too. And, and if you work with a gallery that isn't to the highest quality, you know, that isn't putting in that work, isn't doing, relying on the artist and that, then there should be a, a conversation of 
what each is going to get out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if like it just seems like it or whatever, but it just seems like there's just a shit ton of art in general oh know, yeah like, i don't know like, what, like uh, i don't know like from from when i, mean, I, I don't know <laughs> if it's just from when i was a kid like it didn't seem like <laughs> just more accessible artists, yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like just or like people are into visual stuff all the time you know hmm. it i think seems like like right yeah. now it's particularly arty right you know? i think hmm. so yeah but i don't know how many artists they're real i always like kind of think that way and then like talk my because the thing I, I'm always like, God damn, there's like a billion artists out there just yeah. killing it. Yeah. And then I like, it's like, I follow like a thousand artists, mm. you know, it's like, like, I think there's a thousand artists I, I think are worth following. Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's not mm. that many. Mm. Now that I think about it. It's like, that's a, that's a handful. I mean, maybe there's another thousand I don't know about, but like, that's these, true. these are the artists I, I think are really talented. Yeah. You know? And and uh, everyone has their own taste, but when I start thinking about it, I'm like, ah, I don't think there's that many really, like, on a certain, there's good artists, there's a, probably a million good artists, but, like, mm -hmm. really talented, really, like, business, or get your business on lock, pursuing art at, like, um, a real professional level, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pursuing it, um, and then creating great art to accompany that business. Yeah. I think it's very small. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, I can yeah. agree with that. It's definitely a really small percentage of artists who have all of that. Yeah, like, or down. even yeah. in the pursuit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there might be yeah, people that are too. like just drawing for to, for mm -hmm. drawing sake or whatever. Yeah, right. It's, it's weird, you know. Like sometimes when you like when you start traveling or something, you'll you'll meet European artists who like mm -hmm. they're just like on a different. Their, their government will have right. residency houses around the world that they can apply to and go and they're instantly kind of like supported as an artist. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like not instant. I mean, it doesn't mean that they don't work, but it's just like right. there's more of a structure to bring them into like a regular mm -hmm. frame, you know? And there's room for, there's an official space for art, right. you know what I mean? And stuff. And here it's just much more like you create your own space. So. Right sometimes feels just wilder and it feels like we're all just like inventing it i enjoy time, that you know? though. yeah i enjoy that too yeah. and i've talked to uh, we've talked to john Wentz about that before about how like france they don't pursue becoming full-time artist as like there's not this like weird pursuit for that where yeah. like here it's like almost like it adds like a like an extra badge on your like you know on your your cub scout mm -hmm. sash thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but I think that weird pressure also makes America create these like really great artists. Mm. You know, it's like that. It's it's like a horrible thing as well as like a really good thing. Yeah. Um, because it, yeah, this culture loves to work hard. Like the American culture likes to work yourself to death. Yeah, it really. And does. that allows certain things to happen such as like us to become this like financial powerhouse in the world, mm -hmm. but then it also uh makes people work themselves to death. Yeah. But the positive as an artist is that culture might allow you to pursue things at a pace that you might not necessarily take. Mm. And if you put in if time is a is a key part of becoming a good artist, and the culture forces us to put more time into it based off our work ethic. Mm -hmm. And to me, that causes, you know, greatness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree speaking of what John Wentz said, they call they say he works like an American. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, well, that's why he's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, he's right. very good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. It's, it's a different... Huh. I guess when you have time to think about things and mm. you're like expected to like sit and think about things, yeah. there's, a, there's a kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, like intellectual, the goal is to reach an intellectual space, mm. right? you know, where I don't know if everybody's had this experience, but in order for me to be where I'm at now, it's, I've had to like think about what I do and make a business right. out of it. You know what I mean? Like I, I heard in one of your podcasts, you were talking about like somebody, telling you you should go to business school right like if you want to be a good artist you know oh, like, right yeah <laughs> it's like 
I also heard that same advice. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Right? <laughs> but but it, it's true. You know what I mean? You do need to, like, at some point to at least define your own business. Not right. necessarily... Mm-hmm. Not necessarily become a good salesman, but you know, right. but right. figure out what it is that you're trying to sell. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then and then becoming good. You know exactly. Yeah. And so like that feels like a really American kind of way of doing things. You know, right. mm. it's it's I it's difficult for me to like kind of step back into a space of just meditating on art right. and all that stuff because I'm more like of a production kind of person. Like because that's right. the way I've formed my head to like take my art and you know like right. yeah you, you think about ideas but really for me ideas come th- in the process of making right. all the time you know right I mean? exactly yeah. making new things and they're small incremental steps it's not mm-hmm. like a whole new thing that i'm suddenly doing right because i stepped away and you know was away on some residence right. you know it's and finally like, your masterpiece popped into your head yeah yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. went to the east and realized you weren't technically good enough to accomplish <laughs> that was, that's always the thing i wonder is like these people that are like spending time trying to like think of the good idea mm-hmm. you know i'm like like but you know how are you gonna be good at it like right. yeah if this idea pops in your head i remember thinking that when i was younger and i had this like idea that i was super stoked on uh and i went to go paint it and it came out shit mm-hmm. and i was like that's not what was in my head like yeah, right. I, I don't i don't have the tools yeah. to do this thing that i want to do yeah you know and that's because i didn't work at it long enough i was i was always painting and stuff but it was just like i haven't gotten there yet because shit takes a long time to be able to execute at a level that you're happy with yeah Mm -hmm. yeah uh but yeah we got quick fire questions oh yeah (laughs) get to the question corner uh should we do all of them or we got enough time for that let's see how fast they go all right so uh first one we do is uh your top five alive uh, living artists oh Oh, yeah (laughs) we used to do dead or alive but (laughs) everyone would only say dead constant flux uh just off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, off the top of my head. Man, uh, you know, I, I freaking love Brendan Monroe. You know? I don't know. Uh, know Brendan the Blob. Yeah. I don't think okay. it's black and white yeah. stuff. It's, it's okay. cool. <laughs> I'll it's, not gonna, it's not necessarily going <laughs> to. No, it is really It's a cool, good way man. for us to learn know, about man. artists, he's, too. <laughs> he's good, dude. I just I like the way he works, and, and I like him as a person. He's, he's a contemporary, you know? I know you've seen his work. Um Oh yeah, his stuff is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's great, man. And it's just black and white. Oh, okay. Most of the time black sure. and white. Mm-hmm. And it's you know, there's a finished, refined yeah, yeah. refined thing to yeah, it. Yeah, his know? stuff is super cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's super cool. Along those lines too, like cryptic, you know, like I think like he has like a really like You're gonna say a bunch of people I don't know, but oh, yeah, I probably know, but... know Cryptic's work too. C R Y. Um yeah, he does like a lot of mandala type stuff, but he really okay. is that dude. You know what I mean? Like, he's not <laughs> oh, really yeah. like a guy who's just painting mandalas because he's a hippie but he's like he's like actually meditating his way through and his skill level is is high you know um i think like is it this guy here yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. He's, he's that's guy. intense he's oh, okay yeah but he does a lot more different mm. things um uh, i don't know i oh, i've seen some of his stuff for sure yet like, anybody i say i'm gonna forget somebody so um, <laughs> yeah no no worries Huh. Yeah, that's good on the quick fire. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't such a hermit, you know. Um, yeah, let me get back to you on that. Next. <laughs> two. Two. <laughs> two down. Top two. All right. Oh, Lord. All right. Yeah, uh, I mean, I love Kelly's work, honestly, but that's just like playing, um, playing short, short-handed. <laughs> but I really do find a lot of inspiration out of it. You just know? save yourself. <laughs> just trying to score some oh, points. Probably, yeah. Almost oh, messed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going yeah, to nudge that I way. I just say number one, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> uh, I have one quick question. Is there uh, an, any artist that you hate? Ooh. <laughs> Do you want me to put if you want if you don't want to they don't have to be alive either so you can oh, okay. you can name a dead alive. to save yourself <laughs> they have to be alive uh i mean you know <laughs> or we could pass <laughs> it's no just... no i tend to like hate on a lot of art honestly <laughs> hell yeah yeah just because i love it you know what i mean it's like right you know it's i i have a high respect you know so people who are lazy i just i just cannot abide by it you know sometimes if i see a white ass painting i'm like 
fuck you, dude. You know? <laughs> a what? A white painting, you know? What do you mean? Do you mean like, like just the canvas? canvas. Just... Oh. <laughs> okay. A Rauschenberg type of thing. And that's the thing that I've now, I'm like, I'm a little bit more mature. And like, I, I can sometimes hate somebody's piece and not mm. necessarily hate their whole body of work. Mm. Sure, yeah. And like, mm. so I'm, I'm seeing a lot more gray, you know? But there was definitely, yeah. like I had a just natural knee-jerk thing to Jeff Koons for a long time, you know mm. what I mean? Like, or... Uh, yeah. Just mostly like people who <laughs> don't make their shit, honestly. You know, yeah, people who like have a big name and don't actually do the thing. Mm. Like I, I'm just not with that. You know, like, I dig it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jeff Koons is a poster child for that mm-hmm. whole world. I watched sure. uh, the new Dave Chappelle special, and then he had oh, yeah. like an after like question thingy. Mm-hmm. He oh, did, did he? Oh, or okay. like there's like a little little mini second part to it. <clears throat> And in that thing, he talks. He like mentioned. He's like, "Yeah, that's why I hate stand-up comedians." Ha! Huh. And he and and then he's like, "Yeah, because, you know, I love her." He's like, oh. "And mm-hmm. when I see someone else on the on the on the stand stand or whatever, like oh. uh, with the mic, with with stand-up, I get mm-hmm. jealous because I'm like, I could do that shit better. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. And he's like, <laughs> when he. He, he said it way better than that but <laughs> when he said it i was like fuck that's so like spot on of how i feel about some artist is like mm-hmm. it's like when they don't appreciate it and love it and respect it enough i'm like fuck you or especially when they're like getting a lot of acclaim and right. they don't like, right yeah. take the they don't take that opportunity to improve themselves right. and instead like get more like Blah. Right. You like right. my shit. You like everything I do. It's yeah. just like, dude, you're being I'm going to try it less. Yeah, you're being a sarcastic yeah. asshole. And, you know, fuck yeah. you, dude. By the, you know, like, by the towel I clean my brush on. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, just, I just really, like, respect people who work. You know, mm-hmm. like, right. And who, you know. Yeah. Even if you're an idea person, you work at those ideas. You right. Know, and you carve out that time. That's just, like, I just think that's important. Hell know? yeah. It's like. That's how I can tell mm-hmm. the things that I like, you know. But, Agreed. But yeah, man. I hate artists, dude. I hate artists. <laughs> <laughs> I went in a hate-a-thon. I just got sucked down at Alec Monopoly, like, rabbit hole. You guys What's know that? that dude? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know God, who you're talking dude. about. Yeah. Oh, it's Monopoly? Don't even go there, Alec. <laughs> yeah. Alec it's oh, just some okay. Richie, he does, like, Richie Rich characters, and they uh, turned out he never did them. And it's just like, oh, really? don't even go there, because it's like. It's like that brainwash He's probably guy. got millions of followers and stuff, and he's just like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. <laughs> like i just wish we could like bless all these people who like will go crazy and be like yo you're the shit you're the bomb you could just wish you could just be like direct their eyes to something that actually is the shit and is the bomb so that they could put their energy towards something more <laughs> right, right. Yeah. artistically productive you know? <laughs> for sure yeah <laughs> hell yeah name those names i like yeah. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, it's right. just like we're never going to cross paths, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. What else I just more more hate a certain attitude about art than necessarily a certain artists. For right? sure. Like, yeah. I just hate the whole like uh, fucking. It's like the, everything's a self portrait, and and it, you know, you know yeah. there's room for that, obviously. You know, like, the thing I don't like is the getting over. Like when you feel like they're just trying to get over mm-hmm. on people. Like you're, like there's nothing. You're just like pretending it's something. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. you, you're you're making up this bullshit, and and it's like that's bullshit, and you know it. You're just mm-hmm. fucking getting over on people, and your intent isn't cool. Yeah, is fucking garbage. You're just there to only make money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you figured out how to like bullshit and network with rich people or whatever you do. But and you feel that shit, dude. People yeah. feel that shit. And that's why like people will be like, oh, my kid could do that stuff. And it's right. like, yeah, you know, he probably could. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, he could for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Yeah. MJ just sent me a picture of her like little little uh like her boss's little kids drawing of all everyone at work mm-hmm. and then had their name written on top and i was yeah. like you crop out that fucking the names on top you put that shit in the moment today yeah <laughs> like, it's really like, true man. it was like one of those things where it was like almost i was like yeah you could fucking totally uh <laughs> see that in the moment just give her a 40 by 60 canvas and yeah. do it over again <laughs> a joke yeah <laughs> uh, i don't know why that reminded me of that but like Sometimes, like, I get like like emails from like teachers who'll be like, "Yo, we just did like a, a you know a workshop like with your work and stuff." And I'm like, 
don't do that shit, man. Like you're fucking training people like the competition. You know what I mean? Like, like you don't fucking do that. Why are you gonna do that? You know what I mean? Like I'm still making it. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck, you know? Hey, these kids are gonna come uh, up hilarious. and just step it up. And it's like, dude, why are you gonna do that? Uh, yeah. Do you have any other ones? Yeah. Uh, what would you do with David Cho money if you had it? Oh, shit. That's funny, man. I was actually working at Facebook when they went public. Oh, is that right? I, yeah. And the wall that I was supposed to paint on, David Cho and his buddies came through and like, oh, no blasted. Shit. I mean, they blasted the entire building. But mm -hmm. like, Yeah. And so it was a funny, it was a funny moment because so like, that building in Palo Alto. Yeah. I remember I used yeah. to work down the street from him and I would walk by and be like, who the fuck painted, who let graffiti kids paint in there? Like, <laughs> you did? Yeah. 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 It was funny, man. But so I was like literally like in the middle of my time being there, which was only like two weeks, they went public and all these fools that were like, and all these like hoodie wearing like sleepless techies were suddenly like millionaires, man. Mm -hmm. and it was like the vibe, like the kind of drooly face <laughs> a lot of them had like i don't know imagining all the things they're gonna buy or whatever you know right but, right yeah <laughs> it was like i don't know it was a crazy moment because then all a lot of people were hitting me up too like oh yeah damn son you get paid out <laughs> oh, Facebook. No. and i'm like <laughs> yeah i yeah, paid more by liquor store owners <laughs> thing you know honestly like you damn. know so i don't know what i'd do with it man honestly like i don't I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy. I don't think. Mm. You know, I think it would just. I think it would probably like set me up for life to because my goals aren't really like I'm not really trying to be like all out there. I'm trying to like have a wholesome life where I can like develop mm -hmm. my ideas and paint mm -hmm. and like and like you know, be cool with my friends and be cool with my family. You know, with my right. stuff and, and right. the good work that eventually mm -hmm. has a legacy. But I'm not trying mm -hmm. to like have my stuff be everywhere. You know what I mean? I want limited amounts. So I think I would just try to figure out what i need and then like mm. probably try to put some of that you know like i've really like i've always really thought about that whole aspect of like using folk arts and stuff so mm -hmm. i think if i had that crazy money i would try to like invest in actual folk artists who are doing stuff oh, okay like help push mm. that along you know that's cool yeah. Yeah. yeah uh and the last thing we do uh we got 10 artists that uh they're all famous artists and uh -huh. you just give your your first impression of like okay. what you think of them okay so first one is rembrandt oh the man I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um yeah i mean uh, all right i mean i don't know it's the highest <laughs> probably one of the highest levels that you can get you right know, perfect you know, so many concepts that we work on today you know the the carol scuro oh and for the, sure yeah, yeah absolutely that's the deal. highest level yeah. mm -hmm. uh next one is van gogh also i mean i no, I mean, I, he's one of those like energetic paintings. You see who was there, you know, and it's like in, sure, a, in an actual yeah. painting, you you actually can feel like, wow, this person just stepped away from this thing. And it's still like, right. it's still textural. The paint just pulled off the thing. You know, it's like, I mean, yeah. I like love and go on my own, mm -hmm. but I kind of hate the picture he's put in people's head of what the artist is supposed to be oh you know sure I mean? like, yeah you totally supposed to get be that the crazy like <laughs> how, you know like somehow Chopping you're your ears and, <laughs> right and that's the one mm -hmm. so like i hate like what people think van gogh is you know what i mean mm -hmm. like, when, mm -hmm. when he was like a scientist you know what i mean he was like an investigator he wasn't just like Ooh, <laughs> let's see what happens right right right, right. Like, that yeah. dude spent a shit ton of time in those fields studying the light and you know, stuff, yeah so, totally yeah <laughs> that's awesome right. yeah it's also like he was also suffering it seemed like from totally. depression oh yeah totally. it's like Big you time. want artists to just be suffering it's like, <laughs> why would you want that yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> let them be okay totally. right yeah. no, but we could amazing, still make right? good like, art without you know cutting our ears off <laughs> yeah. totally. it's like would you not want to like if he had the ability to maybe like medicate himself a little bit and right. be in a better headspace like wouldn't you want that for him <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Uh, be around to make more art at least yeah. yeah i don't think that would influence his art like too much mm. but people like when people talk about him it's like this kind of like oh he he never you know he never had the wealth of right. his paintings and all this stuff and it's just like i don't i hate the, i hate the way people talk about him yeah i mean i hate that too like, i like, totally agree with this like it but the, when they say it it's kind of like a little like isn't that delicious? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucked up and, and right. wonderful? But it's you also know? Like, it's like, like, you guys, man. Like, 
It's also like, oh, his brother supported him his whole life. I'm like, well, I don't have that fucking option. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Like, if I had that, cool. Yeah. God, yeah. what is your problem, people? Like, I don't. <laughs> like, like, oh, Van Gogh never sold a painting. That's because he had a brother that supported him. I wish mm-hmm. I had an option. <laughs> mm-hmm. One of my brothers was like, you know what? Just paint your rest of your life. I'll, sl- I'll keep sending money your way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but That'd be nice. It would be. <laughs> Brother, step your shit up. <laughs> I know, bro. No, one of them is listening. <laughs> I know. You're the guy he's talking to. <laughs> yeah. uh, next one is Dolly. Oh, fucking Dolly, man. Uh, you know, he's he's a natural. I mean, for me, being being Mexican, you know, like Dolly might as well be a Mexican artist along with Picasso, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's in that pantheon. I mean, I don't know. He's an automatic. I, I wish I could be like all like, whoa, fucking Dolly and everything, but I kind of take it for granted, honestly. As, mm. as as a great, you know what mm. I mean, like he's I in the pantheon. But I I don't know, I don't mm-hmm. I don't know what else to say about him that <laughs> hasn't been said, you know. Cool. Well, let's begin. Yeah, the next one is Picasso. Picasso, yeah, yeah. He's he's somebody I keep discovering. You know what I mean? And okay. Keep being like, wow, another like I think he kind of falls into that. Well, Banksy falls into that Picasso realm of mm. like you mm-hmm. know just like you just say the name, and people are like, oh. Mm, right, right. the like, name that was art yeah of course i yeah. see the art in that shit the and name almost means more than the artist at this totally. point yeah right. Right. it's a given uh but yeah i mean he's he's so powerful i'm not gonna get i mean i don't know a lot of people these days have a lot more emotions that have to do with his life his personal, life as a person yeah his, as mm-hmm. an artist i have no idea about any of that stuff mm. um but i just again see somebody who worked really really hard had interesting ideas uh dealt in that whole realm of cultural appropriation, you know, and I think he hmm. dealt with it in a way of like, I'm a vessel to this art thing and I'm just fucking sailing through it. You know what I mean? I think, you know, I think he could hush any critic any fucking day. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, so, and yeah, Picasso's Picasso, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, another big name, Monet. <laughs> oh, Monet. Um, I guess I just think more delicate, you know, like, like kind of paintings and stuff he's not he's not somebody i look look to but you know it's right quite, you know yeah all right <laughs> but if it's a romantic kind of kind of space that i just don't dwell in i, I mean, see yeah <laughs> fair enough mm-hmm. <laughs> all right uh frida Kahlo. speaking of mexican artists so. <laughs> uh i mean i i really love frida i i also hate the way people treat frida you know? <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i if i see one more woman white woman dressed as Frida Kahlo for Day of the Dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, that is cultural appropriation. People. It's <laughs> like in the really worst annoying, way. Yeah. Like, I think just like she's been co-opted in so many ways, you know, it's like, and I don't know. I celebrate totally Frida, you know, like, but she's just her own person, but she's just, he, so many people have used her to like, oh, she's this and she's this and all this stuff. And it's like, man, she's, just, you know, if you're an artist, you only really speak for yourself, you know what I mean? Right. And eventually the artwork at some point becomes something else. But so many things have been ascribed to her mm-hmm. that I don't necessarily feel like she would have necessarily been, you know, I'm that. You know? Mm. Right. Yeah. An interesting. But then point. again, I don't know because I don't want to speak for her either. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah. yeah. I love her work. I can't stand her fans. Kind of <laughs> yeah. You know All right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like well just, put. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's other Mexican artists female contemporary artists you know like mm. that we're doing equally incredible stuff you know and it's like not to take anything away from from frida but it's like she is not the beginning and end of mexican art you know what i mean it's like and a lot of times she and diego are put up as like boom mexican art right exactly yeah. beginning and end mm-hmm. you know what i mean like mm-hmm. here's your and i just you know it's like she's she was great but remedios vado she was great man and she had a long life of making artwork that was really interesting and along those lines too and mm. you know she doesn't really get all that that credit and love but you know who's that say it again uh, remedios remedios Baro. Baro. v-a-r-o yeah oh. i've heard oh. the name i'm not familiar enough with her work though mm. yeah she was in that time you know mm. it feels a little dated but when she was doing it it was you know unique you know, mm-hmm. it was, gotcha it was new mm. but, 
but no man yeah for sure frida is like i feel like she's a part of my family and a part of like where i come from my artistic heritage you know mm -hmm. um so those things are built in but yeah because of that like we were talking about painting it's just i just really hate when like people just like throw her on a napkin or you know what i mean or on a t-shirt right. and right. like <laughs> ascribe some text you know that she didn't say to that thing it's my I face see. and yeah, all that stuff yeah. and it's just like i just like i get sick of it man like, <laughs> it's like all right you know mm. yeah you put it on your coffee cup <laughs> right totally, exactly. totally. <laughs> it's really so. annoying man <laughs> it's like a it's like a free nike sign for anyone that wants to slang stuff yeah <laughs> yeah totally. you know? i'm sexy frida skeleton girl <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Halloween's coming up. Yeah, better not. Coming up, man. Better not like Jack catch you in the streets. <laughs> Don't let me go on 24th Street. <laughs> yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's all funny, right. It turns into like Burning Man Halloween kind of mm. shit. I'm like, dude, come on, man. If you're going to celebrate something, like, <laughs> you're educate yourself on it a little bit. You know? Yeah, for sure. Good anyway, words. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, next one is Mark Rothko. Oh, oh. Not a personal favorite of mine, but he's been a favorite of good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, fucking love it. I the the concept of something vibrating mm -hmm. at the edges, you know, sure. is is something that I didn't really understand until I really like sat with one of his paintings. Um, nice. But he's not like again, it's just there's not enough meat there for me, you know, for, gotcha. for what I want. But like for sure. I, but yeah. definitely like when it comes to like abstract painters and, and having something actually really like totally outside of what I would normally look for mm -hmm. really affect me. Like, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, next one is, uh, Jackson Pollock. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were talking about craft. I don't know. I feel like a lot of that stuff is accidental, you know. For like you sure. work. I don't, I don't know. You're speaking to the choir here. <laughs> totally. You know, I respect the work. I respect the hours that go into something, but I just feel like it was just like a lot of like kind of like meh, <laughs> meh, big man shit. I'm just gonna just mm. throw some shit on a wall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Know. Agreed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Where's the? I don't know. Where's the practice? And where's the? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's not. What do you guys think about him? Uh, oh, we rail on him all the time, uh, especially yeah. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. I just did a little Pollock painting on one of my pieces as a joke. <laughs> How did that uh, go? Was it hard? Huh? Was it, <laughs> was hard? it hard? No, I was like, let me see if I can do this, and I did it in like uh, this size, mm. and I was like, yeah, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, I've even seen ones that people are like, this is the, the line, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no it's not the one you ever, you ever hear <laughs> about like thing. oh they found this found out that this jackson pollock that sold is actually a fortune you're like yeah you know why that was able to happen <laughs> like do you know why someone was able to pull that off <laughs> <laughs> because you can't find the skill you yeah. can't you don't know where it is exactly. you know it's like <laughs> it's like uh when he started splattering paint i wonder how many people can define like this like like <laughs> this this year of Jackson Pollock till like his final splattering <laughs> yeah, of paint. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like an artist that I wish like sometimes I wish like art was a little bit more like sports, you know? Because yeah, like right. in sports, you I put agree. out somebody who can't play the game. <laughs> yeah. And they get beat up. They get you know demolished. What I mean? they get yeah. hurt and they get demolished. <laughs> and with art, it's like the fans will just be like, no, nah, he's really good. Right. He's really good. We like that shit. You know? Yeah. And, like, and all the players yeah. are like, what? I like his story. <laughs> right. Exactly. That guy's <laughs> the best at it, but he has a good story. Totally, mm. totally. Mm. That boxer that got knocked out, great story. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's, he's the real champ. <laughs> totally. totally. Uh, that's so funny. Is that it? Uh, we got Shepard Ferry and then one more. Mm. Right. Shepard Ferry. I mean, you yeah, know, I don't know. I can't tell where it begins and ends. You know what I mean? Like he's a production. Mm, artist, you know? Okay. I respect like the game, you know, and I I think he's on the forefront of the people who started that whole genre of if you want to call it street art or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. like you can't you can't not include him. You right. know what I mean? In that pantheon of whatever. So mm -hmm. hate him. And, you know, it's it, I just like things that are a little bit more organic. If I if I was gonna buy something, you know, what right. I mean? I wouldn't choose to necessarily buy one of his pieces unless I knew that 
she made he it was the one through, yeah or something like that you know but i feel like there's a lot of work that he didn't you know mm -hmm. but i don't actually know but i respect i respect his game um yeah you don't know but you sometimes know. i sometimes <laughs> i really like some of his work though you know there's there's a pretty big piece in Jersey City that's like a big wave that is like, mm -hmm. it's, pretty, right. it's pretty awesome, man. And hmm. All yeah. it is is a big wave and it's like, it's beautiful and it's really well executed and it's like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And then there's, you know, other stuff that I'm, you know, not. Right. But generally, there's a pretty, like, you can't really fuck with the design, you know? Like, there's a lot of intricate stuff in there. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, yeah. Like, you know, uh, I just don't know how much of his hand plays a part. That's always my... Right. Right. issue but yeah whatever yeah it's great at marketing <laughs> great at marketing man you know if got a lot was... of places in mexico and everybody's wearing that obey shit and stuff. oh is that right <laughs> damn dude yeah <laughs> everywhere <laughs> like it's random huge. it's like the most one of the big black market names like mm. obey and supreme and like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah hmm. yeah all right last name is bob ross oh bob ross <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves Bob Ross, right? Like, everybody loves Bob Ross. Does anybody hate on him? Like, do you have anyone that hates Bob Ross? Uh, uh, it's more like people have been like, I don't understand him. Anyone, <laughs> like, that, no. anyone that hated Bob Ross on the podcast that's still walking the earth? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cool when they put him on Netflix, man. I started, like, kind of like, I'd be like, I listen to him while I'm painting. And then <laughs> I'd just cool. be like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Watch that yeah. whole thing and you're like, how the fuck did he do that? Yeah, hey. Like, what? There's Where did that come from? You know what I mean? Like, right. like little stroke. And you're like, There's Damn. only two things on TV that can do that, and that's uh, Bob Ross and the Nature Channel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. Yeah. He's Planet a force Earth. of nature. <laughs> yeah, he just stops you in the track and like, all right, eight hours later, and you're like, okay, well. Oh, so chill. And I feel like he did it right, dude. He had like a life of like, you know, he's got Bob Ross paints. and mm -hmm. like, Right. Like, he just got big enough. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't like have to like, blast out some giant side of a building to like call attention to himself he just right. kind of like <laughs> quietly did that shit yeah. like, right all right dude yeah you know? yeah you yeah. gotta blow anybody's mind but dude yeah yeah hell yeah <laughs> well we fucking did it we did it we did it fellas <sighs> uh, thank you so much for doing this problems. yeah mm. thanks for coming down to the house hell yeah. <laughs> people want to find you instagram yep Jetmar one, J E T M A R one, mm. um, and uh, on Facebook, Facebook, no Facebook, social or website. Ooh, uh, uh, J E T or Jetro Martinez, <laughs> but JetroMartinez.com. But man, updated. I, I don't even know. Updated <laughs> six years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Uh, if anybody wants to help build me a website, hit me up. <laughs> 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 college credits <laughs> yeah exactly. college credits anything like that uh, awesome yeah. yeah well thanks man we really appreciate it yeah, yeah thanks, it was a so. super fun conversation yeah, yeah good times hell yeah mm -hmm. this has been waiting dry if you're still listening fuck off this episode is sponsored by trickel hell Brushes. yeah motherfucking trickle <laughs> i say trickel <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, go to the to trickhell.com. Yeah, go to their website. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, t uh, pick up some brushes and some wood panels and yeah. some floater frames. Yeah, they're beast. That brushes, the quality is amazing. They sure are, Josh. Hell they yeah. sure are. Hell yeah. So, yeah, some of my favorites they got yeah, there. My favorites uh, are like... Um, the fine detail ones, like the I'm I'm not that into like uh, crazy bristles or uh, what's wrong. You done yet? Uh, yeah. Can sure. I can I at least finish a sentence of mine? Uh yeah yeah go ahead dude I'm fuck. All right. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, uh -huh. I'm, uh, I really like the Spectrum brushes. Yeah. Uh, they're really yeah. good. God damn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really like the, the Spectrum brushes because uh, if you're really into like... The Spectrum the, brushes, you said? Yes, the Spectrum brushes. Cool. Where was I? Uh, I really like the Spectrum brushes. I like the their bristle brushes. Yeah, bristles. Bristles God, are cool. God damn it. <laughs> Can I get through one sentence all right? <laughs> I also like their their opal synthetic brushes. Got to try those opal. out. Opal, that sounds a little cool. Is what I mean to say. I think you just need to shut the fuck up and let me finish this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So their uh, their opals, my 
personal favorites, as I was trying to say, the Spectrum brushes. And uh, if you're feeling real extra fancy, go for their uh, Kolinsky's. Silver. <laughs> <laughs> or their rounds. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, or their flats. The long flats are my faves. Did, uh, did you want to take this outside, Sergio, or what? <laughs> you know what? I think we really just need to hash out all these issues we've been having lately. <laughs> Um, so. acting. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was hilarious. <laughs> you trying to be aggressive is seems so nervous for you. <laughs> it really is. I'm like sweating. It's not just because it's hot. I know you're like you're like so nervous, and we know we're not going to actually fight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, well, anyways, <laughs> yeah, if you want to paint like your favorites, they got their pro team artists that you can check out as well. Yeah. They got Crayola, our buddy Glenn Arthur. Shout out. Mab Graves mm -hmm. and Nick Runge or Rungi, however you say it. Oh, yeah. You pro team. <laughs> they walk in slow-mo. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, use the code WTD10 when you check out, and you'll get 10% off. Hell, yeah. Yeah, uh, purchasing these brushes help us keep going. So supporting them supports us. Absolutely. Uh, you forgive me, Sergio? Just this once. <laughs> Joshua <laughs> awesome. Lawyer, just this once. Awesome. All right.